welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And once as always, like many times before, but it never really seems to ever get old, we are granted or blessed with another great, great animated picture from the DCU world. I don't know what it is. It's like one of those ones, like talk about like how many other movie companies can give you that many movies with, you know, and strike out like so little. I mean, like, the worst DCU movie is still better than a lot of other people's movies. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think more than the fans got to be keeping it alive. Because they, they make enough money off these. I mean, I looked at sales one time, and sales were declining as time went on. There's a period where, t- where they were shooting up really high, and it was when, like, some of the Batman movies were coming out. But it's I, it's kind of weird, because as time went on, it dropped down. But these things still came out. There's this period where it seemed like they were pulling away from anything that wasn't Justice League. It was for, for a period, it's like, we're doing whatever! Like, actually, we're just going to do Superman, Batman, and Justice League. Yeah. And now they're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, Constantine. Um, uh, um, uh, Dark Justice League. I don't know. Vixen. Uh, well, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Superman. They're back doing Superman movies again. Teen Titans only. Before they had a bait group, like, tiptoe in there. With, and granted, they have, like, a couple Teen Titan shows now to get by on that, but still. Yeah, no, it's one of those ones where it's just, like, yeah, no matter what. And I think the thing is, is when it's kind of animated movies, I just don't think it costs that much to make one. At the end of the day, compared to, like, a movie. Like, I think that some of these movies only cost, like, a couple million dollars. So it doesn't take a whole lot for these things to make a profit. And probably as long as they're making twice as much money as it costs... They'll keep it alive forever. You know what I mean? I, I don't. I think an animated movie's not too hard to put back to get or put your funding back together at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And these, I don't know. They've they've managed to keep the quality up pretty high on these, so that's always a good thing. Yeah. Well, this one's like the the DC's the Reign of the Superman, the sequel to um, uh, Death of Superman, the last one that kind of came out, but then still continuing in the they're pretty much DCU Justice League slash Batman world, and I guess now it's like Teen Titans and everything else, but um. Because it seems like when you get the DCU movies, you either get, nowadays, you either get the continual stories from, like, the section that's all the connected universe, or then you get your standalone ones, kind of like a killing joke, or when they do something that kind of harkens back to, like, Batman the Animated Series, or something something along those lines. I know that, um, when, I don't know if it was when I was on, when I was on, on, on um, Indie Comics Club. Is that what it's called? I'm sorry. What's your other podcast? Yeah, Indie Comics Club? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Indie Comics Club with an X. Like, Comic Zone. <laughs> like, it's like the Sega Gen... Like- really? Like, I was thinking about this. I was putting this all together. I was like, shit, because, like, we were, I was playing that Sega Genesis collection, and then, you know, you play Comic Zone. I'm like, dude, that Comic Zone guy is like the adult version of, like, Superboy from that era. <laughs> He kind of is. Like, this thing, he bleached his hair, and he's like, he's like I, grew, I grew up a ponytail, man. <laughs> Put a jacket on. There- there's that thing where it was almost like a semi crew cup, and they had that stupid little ponytail that just kind of dangles there in the back. And then you got the circular glasses, which was funny because we was watching Demolition Man the other day too, and in that movie they were wearing the circular glasses too. It was just that that was the hip thing to have, is those circular glasses at that early '90s time period. What can I say? I'm a big fan of John Lennon. <laughs> yeah, John Lennon has a comeback. <laughs> well, here's the thing about that. I just I'm just thinking, what if like John Lennon did like did like deadlifts and fucking surfed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's a, it could happen. Yeah, it only wore sandals. No, um, well, even those, I'll, I just won't go too long on this because I know we have a tendency to do that. But like, I remember I even had like it was back when we make a lot of movies. I remember I bought a pair of those fucking like circular sunglasses just because oh these would be good for a character in a movie or something. And once I was just trying to wear them out in public, like someone's like. Maybe you like do you take those fucking glasses off? <laughs> what? Don't just take those fucking glasses off. You ain't helping. I walk past the mirror. I'm like, oh, you're right. It's not. <laughs> yeah, well, those ones almost make you like when you wore them. You almost had the look of like the Nazi guy, like an Indiana Jones. <laughs> 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 Which is never any good for. That's the guy you don't want to be looking like. And he froze. And I'm back. I'm back, I think. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. It was funny when it just... It's like, you, you look like the Nazi guy. Oh, God, he's coming back from the dead. His ghost is coming alive. <laughs> just like the Nazi guy. Well, from Indiana Jones, the first one. Because, you know, he's got the circular glasses. Oh, right, because he had the circular glasses. Like, it's like, where is the... What were they after again? Where is the amulet? Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> just, he just like puts his hand on it, then we can see it steaming. Bam! That guy, that guy's going Nazi from Indiana Jones. No, no, no. I was aiming, I, I was aiming for John Lennon, but all right, whatever. We landed on Nazi. <laughs> I would I take guess. Superboy second. Yeah, I know. Maybe people, you know, see, I know. I, I had those Superboy... kind of glasses too for a long time because I had like the purple ones, so they were like the extreme <laughs> John Lennon, like Ozzy Osbourne ones. But um, they, really, the weird thing though is like you wear those for like a couple hours, you take them off, and then everything just stays purple. Yeah, <laughs> like that can't but... be good. Well, those kind of glasses, those weird circular glasses, like. I've seen people pull them off. They look all right, but you have to. I don't know. I I don't think I'm one of them. And I think you almost it, it's almost this thing you got to work up to. Like you don't just go out and get a pair of circular glasses. You have to be like someone like John Lennon to pull that off. Like all right, you earned those. <laughs> yeah, you know you get you have to be an eclectic person now. It's kind of like walking around with big old like star shaped glasses. You know, unless you're Elton John, you ain't getting away with that. Let's just say that. Yeah, and unless you pulled off something Elton John related. Like, if something, like, say one day Bruce Springsteen decided to rock those, like, well, I don't get it, but, you know, he's the boss, so <laughs> yeah. who am I to judge? Yeah. Who's us to give the boss orders? Come on. Yeah, no one tells the boss what to do. But um, in this Ray and the Superman one, I do love how they kept the 90s-ness of Superboy. I'm like, that. that's awesome. I love how it's just, like, he just sits around in, like, the Lex Luthor mansion just watching, like, 90s sitcoms and TV shows, and that's how that's all he knows about the outside world. I'm like, that, that's amazing. I'm, I love just small things like that. <laughs> well, they acknowledge, because he was, when they first brought him in, he was a very nice... Oh, first off, let me say this, because I kind of left, we got on a glasses tangent there for a second. I think it, Craig may have said this. It was when, either when I was on your guys' oh. show or he was on our show. Um, that I think that this, that, that like you know, uh, Young Justice might take place in the same world as uh, is Under the Red Hood. Oh, well, yeah. I saw some like of the newer episodes of Young Justice, just clips of them, just clips, and they're usually more similar similar character models now to this like wonder woman's in the same exact outfit and other characters are in the same outfit same voices i think it was rosario dawson maybe i'm wrong but even with that the only thing that makes me question is just the different superboy unless there's more than one superboy at some point in time which could have happened in the comics because i know that that happened because i know that in the 90s they brought in this superboy and then later they brought him in teen titans and it was more accurate to um caught to the uh to superboy and uh the the newer teen titans yeah well then there's also the superboy before this 90s superboy as well too uh yeah. where i think I, don't, God, I couldn't even tell you too much about history about that superboy but i just know because you see the comic covers of it and so on but um mm -hmm. but yeah but th this this is the superboy though it's like when you see any clips from like you know the death of superman era and you see this superboy this you, you know what year it is when you see that superboy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'll be honest, part of me was kind of like, originally, uh, I thought they did a good job with him, because one of the things that bothered me about Superboy around that time, from at least what I have read, was he's like, hey, I'm on my own here, I'm the Metropolis Kid, yet you're wearing a fucking S on your chest, where in this one, he was, he was a little douchebag, but you didn't <laughs> fucking hate him. No. He, he was, there's enough funny moments to them, and he was kind of like this, you know, very self-centered, kind of millennial type kid that was obsessed with the 90s, but still, I thought that it was one of those things that kind of worked out for him because he was you know for all the shit going on he's like the comic relief and they're just small things there's a part when luther gets mad and he just chucks something against the tv screen and he's like couldn't find the remote <laughs> yeah no, i know i like that one well i think that was the thing too it's like he's and i think he because he had a nice progression because he started off just like the douchiest guy ever but like if, what do you expect if you're kind of like lex luther's son just hanging out at the house like you ain't gonna be a good person let's just say that but as it goes on, he kind of progresses into being more of like you know a good kid. Maybe it's because it's like it's because it's like my two dads story. But <laughs> that's always like that's where it just makes me laugh so much. It's just like I love leaning over and telling people that. Be like, oh, you know who Superboy is? He's pretty much like the gay love child of Superman <laughs> and Lex Luthor. Well, wait, wait, they have a gay like, relationship? Well, not really. It's like a science experiment thing. But uh, it just sounds funny when you say it like that. Luther said it was for science. He said it was. But he also wanted to have the real thing, too. It, if it was, it was definitely hate-fucking. No way around it. I mean, I, I think that he's so he hates Superman so much and he's so obsessed with it. I get. I bet, you know, if, if you tell... If you got Luther into some, like, you know... It'd be hard to, like, trick Luther into anything. But if you can get him into thinking, like... You know, if you fuck Superman, you win. 
How many people can stand that? How many people can survive that? He's like, hmm, <laughs> my next challenge. He probably would. He'd... I can craft a kryptonite condom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta throw him in a red room, you know what I mean? With no sun and everything like that. Depower him. <laughs> Get him where he's weakest. That'd be too easy, though. <laughs> That'd be too easy. <laughs> Just imagine Superman wakes up just like, oh, just in a red mirror, just sweating it like it's an infrared sauna, and all of a sudden Lex Luthor comes in there just bare-ass naked. The song from Pulp Fiction and the Gimp starts playing. He just fucking has, like, Bizarro jerking off in the corner watching. Just looking over his shoulder, creepy-like. <laughs> and Bizarro turned on not. Uh, Bizarro that. don't like rape. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There goes the first couple listeners right there. Uh, that, that's that's what we called the uh, are you in or are you out phase of the podcast. Luther's already in. He's way in. He's, ah, he's deep in. So yeah, anyway, we should probably cover back. So all right, that takes place after Death of Superman. <laughs> No, no fucking has happened yet. Yeah. And, um, well, and, and the that's other that's Superman too. What always makes that one cool is if anybody never really saw that previous version that came out, um, was that like I, the build up to it made it such a neat one where it took literally the entire Justice League plus Lex Luthor and then Superman kind of came in. So it made it so that that Doomsday battle really seemed intense. Like there was a re it wasn't just Superman battling him and it was just like, who's going to win? It's like, no, no, Doomsday took out all the other Justice League members, and when it got down to it, the only person who could stop him was Superman, and he had to sacrifice himself, well, drain his power to, like, the bottom level, like like a cell phone going out and then not being usable for a while until you find a new place to recharge it. Those crystal batteries. Yeah, those crystal ones. Always rechargeable. Yeah. But, um, but no, that, like, because that, that was, like, the one, I remember when that last movie came out, it was kind of like, oh, okay, it's like... Not, I mean, don't get me wrong, Death of a Superman's great, but it is one... Or Death of a Superman. <laughs> it's like Death of a Salesman. A salesman? <laughs> death of a Superman. Not Death of a Superman. <laughs> but um, it's kind of... It was like one of those stories. It's like, okay, how many times are you guys going to do that? Because the only thing science DC does is once like one story kind of does well, they're like, oh shit, let's just do that like three or four times in a row. You know? I mean, they did the same thing with like the League of Assassins and, you know... It was just kind of like, okay, it was in Batman Begins, that's cool. Oh, well, then you're going to put it in Arrow. Oh, well, then you're going to put it in, you know, Goth. Oh, you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, you guys, you stop at any moment now. Like, we don't need to see it in every single incarnation. And that was kind of well, like how I... this was, too, because this was like the original DCU movie was Death of Superman, or Superman Doomsday is what they called it then. And then you kind of had it pretty much of Batman v Superman, and then it kind of came out here, and it was just like, oh, okay, so here's another take. But it, but it worked. It was one of those ones where it's like, no, no, that came together really well, and that was like, here's a classic story told of a fresh style. I'm wondering why they, I mean, maybe we said this when we first talked about Death of Superman, but um, I'm wondering why they chose that one, because usually you can kind of see a pattern. If, if they're doing a lot of one particular character in different mediums, it's usually they're trying to prepare you for what the next movie or upcoming show is going to be, because... There is a period where they were using Deathstroke in a lot of things. They were using him in Arrow. He mm -hmm. popped in in Flash, probably. And then they used him in Batman Arkham. Teen Titans. Times. Teen Titans. And then they, for a minute, for a minute, he was going to be the villain. And what was going to be the Ben Affleck, Jeff Johns Batman movie. And then they pulled out of that. So now it's just like, oh, okay, well, we people always know who Deathstroke is, I guess. And then, I, I feel like whenever they start to throw a character out a lot, it's when they're trying to prepare people up for it. Like Green for, Lantern for as well, too, because they had the Green Lantern, the amazing TV show, well, the CG one. Mm -hmm. Then they had the, you know, First Flight, and then Emerald Knights, and then they had the movie, and they're like, well, fuck it, put that Green Lantern back in the can. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't, and don't that, you dare pull out another Green Lantern. But those movies are awesome, and that TV show is great. Yeah, nobody fucking watched them. Don't put them back in. It's like, oh. What about those Green yeah, Lantern fans? I, fuck them, they ain't worth it. There's not enough of them. I know there's a lot of Green Lanterns. There ain't enough of them fans. If only there were many fans as there were Lanterns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the downfall of the Green Lantern. He's got... There's more characters than there is fans for him. But, like, for a minute they were talking about... Uh, what was I going to say? For... for I, well, I, I feel like... So, I, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it was, like, an anniversary thing. Maybe this is, like... I haven't been keeping track of... Uh, 
how many, maybe it's like the 25th, or the 30th movie, or maybe it's almost been like 15 years or something, but, um, or 10 years or something like that, because I'm wondering why they chose to go back to Doomsday in the first, or, or uh, Death of Superman in the first place, because I know that they're not planning on doing anything Superman or Doomsday oriented for a while, so. Well, what year was Superman Doomsday? Was that 2006 or 7? Or was, was it 8 assume... even? I'm assume... It was probably 2007, well, because uh, 2006 or 2007, because 2008 is when Gotham Knights came out, because that's when Dark Knight was coming out. So I want to say, in the order they all went in, I want to say it was um, for the first couple. It went Doomsday, Superman Doomsday, New Frontier, Justice League, New Frontier, uh, Batman, Gotham Knight, and then Wonder Woman. And then from there, I want to... It, it could Superman, be... Batman. Yeah, I think that was it. From there, it's kind of, you know... It's, it's a list. From there, it's just like, wait, which one was it again? I don't know, after a while, but yeah. So, um, by that standard, it will... It almost would have been 10 years, I guess you would say, as the DCU thing. Because they had that big old fat box set that came out. I mean, I guess this movie was... Or the last one, technically, was a little bit late. It would have been 2018. See, if it was 2008, it kind of makes sense. It would have been like... <clears throat> the 10th year anniversary or something like that but um mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know maybe it's just one of those ones they just wanted to kind of come back to it and tie it in with their new kind of like ongoing series because it was a much more uh they they, they, they uh, stretched it out a lot more took their time with it and they covered because that one movie even though that first movie's good it covers the death and rebirth of superman where this one is let's just take our time with it. one movie's death one movie's rebirth yeah, and I think that's kind of a nice thing, too. I mean, granted, yeah, Doomsday's great on its own, but it is one of those ones, like, it's kind of like the short and sweet version of that tale, where this one kind of, you get a lot more of the elements, you get all the extra characters, which is cool, because, you know, once Superman's dead, it's like, all of a sudden, there's, like, up for grabs, whoever wants to be Superman. No matter, you, you just, it's kind of like, I guess, like, in the Spider-Verse, you just put on, you know, a costume from, like, a Kmart and go go out and fight crime. This one's only in black. Oh my God. I just I do like that I do like that they actually stuck to mullet Superman '90s mullet Superman with a gun on his back and you know that was always like we gotta find an excuse for him to have a gun well shit we'll make him weaker because kids like guns it's the '90s kids love guns they got super soakers <laughs> yeah we gotta also sell a toy with you know there had because there had to, that I'm guessing that had to be some kid saying like you know what. I think Superman needs a gun. Like, you know, dude, he doesn't need a gun. He has everything else. But he looks so cool with the gun. You know, that. And then they're like, well, we got to find a way to make a toy off that. So, <laughs> all right, we'll fucking cram crowbar in there. And meanwhile, Dan Jurgen's like, these little fuckers. <laughs> if Superman has a gun, he should shoot them in their fucking face. Okay, Dan. Okay, you know what? You know what's wrong with this planet? It's the damn teenagers, let me tell you. Look, I'm, I'm going to draw a teenager I hate right here. <laughs> That's the thing about Dan Jurgens. I was actually reading some more of his recent Superman. He did like this issue. Well, it's, it's literally, because I'll be honest, Death of Superman, the book itself, the artwork is great, but the um, the the writing it's a little stiff. But but you know, it's it was it was it was it was just well, it wasn't that old. There were better books at the time, but I think it it, it works for what it is. But um. He's he wrote something a little bit earlier, and it was like the Lois and Clark Superman, and I was like, wait a minute, is this a continuation of the TV show, and they're doing it through Rebirth, but it was just called Lois and Clark, because the whole, right at Rebirth, they had it where New 52 Superman dies, and then a S Superman from another universe, I think the original universe, comes in, and by this point he had a kid, uh, they named John, and he and Lois are married, and he's actually like... He actually didn't stay like in his late twenties, early thirties. He's in his like mid forties now, and he's just had his beard. He's just like, this is this world's different from our world. Some things are the same, but even though people are younger, it's far more jaded, far more darker. So it's like Dan Jurgens being like, "Hey Dan, yeah, you know how you hate the new Fifty Two? Fuck yeah, I do." Like, oh well, how would you like to introduce? original superman and shit, and shit all over the the edgy angry superman well i mean if, if you won't fuck yeah sign me up motherfucker he <laughs> seems like this guy who's like very he seems like old man like this isn't my superman but at the same time he, he actually knows superman pretty well the way he writes them so well it's like dan jurgen's one of those kind of guys like i i always look forward to if he does something but it's just like i you so i, I love just like his take on like when you get it doesn't matter like how old dan jurgen's is i feel like dan jurgen's is that guy who's like 19 years old he's like fucking hate my generation 
<laughs> yeah, well, there's even he's like, one of those guys who's even... like, I wish I was back, you know, even older in the past. I wish well, I was in the World War II days. Well, sometimes, well, sometimes there's even like those people like, okay, you crusty old fuck, get over it. But every so often you get one where it's just like, actually, no, I kind of get where this guy's coming from, or he's so he's so like die hard by his words, like, okay, he's not compromising or you know making excuses for for anything. Uh, that what was like, there was even one where he's all like, you know what really annoys me? Fucking cell phones and all the social media bullshit. <laughs> How are you going to fit that into a story? Fucking Green Arrow? Like, uh, wait, wait, what? Yeah, there's going to be, like, this ring of supervillains, like, posting, like, them killing people online, and Green Arrow's going to fucking stop it. We're going to start up with this one stupid little fucking kid who starts a MySpace trying to be a badass supervillain, but guess what? He gets fucking murdered immediately. <laughs> like, I'm assuming this is the press meeting. I'm assuming this is the meeting he had at DC. <laughs> I just, I'm sure he's actually a very nice guy. <laughs> I feel like Dan Jurgens just has so much pent-up rage every single time he comes to work. But he writes things so optimistically and so, like, you know, why we need... What, this is why we need good old-fashioned American values. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need a punch in your face, damn it. That's why we need fucking Superman. Now, which Superman was the one that died from the New 52? Was it the Superman from the the Jeff... The Grant jo Morrison Superman. Oh, the Grant Morrison. I almost said Jeff Johns. I meant, yeah, Grant Morrison. Well, I guess Jeff Johns wrote him at some point. But it was, I guess it started off... Because that's what they do with, the, with a lot of those books is they start off with, like... I mean, you know this, but, like, they'll start off with, like... Writing Justice League, we got Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. Like, holy fuck. And then you go on to, like, Volume 2. Oh, they, they worked on two issues. We're going <laughs> on to a new team now. Like, they'll, they'll usually do that shit to rope you in. And uh, it doesn't mean it's bad, but that's what they would usually do. Where Scott Snyder and um, Capullo stuck with it. And, um, but I want to say Superman, Morrison was writing it for the first three volumes, mostly. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as action comics goes. Well, yeah. And then after... And and then they went off to I, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name. I think it's Tyson something Tyson. But um, but the um, but yeah, like during like the end, leading into Rebirth, Superman dies, and but that's where the whole time this other Superman, OG Superman with a kid, was work was living there, living in the shadows. But he was working at night, and he was wearing the black suit. Letting it absorb in the sunlight, so he so like all day, and then go fly around at night in do Superman shit, try to be unseen. Hmm. Now, what happened to the, the the other Superman from New 52? You know what? I haven't read it. <laughs> I got a massive, massive fucking stack, but I, f I flipped through it, and some big cosmic ship goes down that leads him dead by the end. But what ends up happening, because I already read a little further ahead with some other Superman shit, they do this thing where it's kind of like, you know, I love comic books, but it does like in inconsequential bullshit. Where they make it so, God, Mickel McPlintz, whatever, M Mr. Mickelplix, whatever the fuck his name is. You gotta make, make him say his name and make him go away. Mm -hmm. He comes in, he stirs some shit up, and then they stop, they, they thwart his plan. But essentially, when they're done, it does this thing where it just kind of retcons it in a way to where both those supermen, kind of their histories fuse together. So Fusion! They do the fusion dance. He does the fusion dance with the dead Superman corpse. No, but that would be awkward if that was the way they chose to go about it. No, but, um... No, they, they, they basically fuse their histories together, and so it's all concise, and so it's not like, oh, that was the other Superman. Like, oh, no, it was always you. Your, your history is just... You know that kind of cosmic bullshit they do once in a while. Yeah, that stuff that, like, if, if you miss that section, then it just gets really confusing. And, I mean, that's already yes. confusing as is, but... You know, especially if you're not there, then you're double confused, but, um... Yeah, like, they do some shit where he's like, uh, oh, yeah, well, it just... Both your histories merge together, and so you have a little bit of this, you have a little bit of that, you know, and you're not as old as you were, but you still have a kid with Lois, you guys are still married, living on the farm, so it's that kind of... I'm pretty sure whenever they come out... I'm not sure, maybe they already did it, but with the three Joker story, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do that. At the end of the day, it's gonna be one Joker. Pretty sure. Yeah, I, you know, that's just kind of how it is. And Superman's one of those ones, I, I always love a Superman book, but it's one of those ones where it's like, I just buy, you know, certain graphic novels here and there, and that's just kind of where I always get my Superman knowledge from. It's not one, you know, there's just, there's always so much time in the day to keep up with, you know, continuous stories, and I always love Superman, but, you know, sometimes I always kind of wonder on all those excess Superman stories. Well, when Superman goes in galactic and goes to space, which he does, a lot, of, it's, it's weird. It, the Superman books kind of stay home, or they go into space going everywhere. And 
and I don't know, Superman comes in waves for me, like the book wise. Like I'll read a lot all at once and then I take a long break because there's just too much back and forth of like, it, it's all interesting, but mm -hmm. there's too much like cosmic shit going on with, you know, this character was revived and killed, this whatever, you know what I mean? So right now I'm just taking a break, but I, yeah, I was working down this massive stack, but going back to this movie, <laughs> yeah. it's still Superman related. So it's still just Superman. a Superman tangent. Yeah, we'll just have this a Superman centric episode, but um, uh, I'm glad they got in a chance to really uh, give Steel another shot. Yeah, because Steel's such an amazing character, and I think that's one of those like Superman characters that you just do not see nearly enough. I always thought that John Steel was so cool. He was like his suit's amazing. He's got the hammer and everything like that. And the whole point that like, hey, Superman saved him one day, so he decided he's going to take his technology. And you know, when Superman's gone, he's going to fill that void. Well, they also do this funny thing with him where they first say, like, where's Steel at? Like, because, you know, like, what happens is Luther is having this big press conference and they're very in your face about it's Trump. It's like, make Metropolis safe again. Yeah. And it shows a picture of him, arms crossed, back to back with Superboy. And Luther's, like, not a big fan of it, but he's like, ah, okay, whatever. All right. <laughs> and then it shows, then, like, you know, they get attacked by um, the Eradicator, which is Superman with sunglasses. And, um, it's like, pu it's like Punisher thing. Superman. That's how I kind of always think of that one. Punisher Superman, yeah. Comes in, starts blowing shit up, and then he's just like, you're a known criminal, Luther, you must pay. And then Superboy fights him off. Steel comes in, and then in the mix of that, like Lois is there trying to like, gather this information because her whole thing is she, it's, she's not doing, she's not trying to track down this story because she's it's her job she's like that's how she copes tracking down the story trying to figure it all out and i i like that about because it it's interesting because the first like probably half of the movie it's a lois lane story which is interesting mm -hmm. and i think that's just kind of cool because that's always like the nice thing about these dcu movies is they always kind of sort of pick that one central character sometimes about two maybe three on certain ones but like it's like it may be a justice league movie and this one's like it may be kind of almost like a superman story but it's going to be almost first and foremost kind of a lois lane story yeah, well, the first one was definitely Superman, because it's Superman on his way out, where mm -hmm. this one is Lois's story building back up to Superman. And you still get all these other characters, so you're not forgetting what you're watching. They all wear an S. But anyway, so after John Steele, is it John Irons? I think it's actually John Irons, and Steele thought, fights off yeah. Eradicator. Yeah, that's right. I think it's... Yeah, you're John, it's John Irons, and then Steele's the superhero name. Yeah, so when he's fighting him off, when he's fighting him off... Then it comes back. She's like, "John, oh, so what? What I miss? Like, oh, you just miss. Like, she's like, you just miss Steel. Then like, Superboy stand. They're like, wait, where's Steel go? <laughs> like, he doesn't pick up on it. Like, there's this wink and nod they have between each other. And he's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, where'd he go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then, no, I like that. <laughs> and then later, like when she sneaks into his place to confront him, she's like, oh, you know, he's like, John, I know you're Steel. I mean, like, I mean, it's very obvious. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh my god, he's like, oh, oh dude, I did a terrible job <laughs> hiding that. I think that these movies do, I think that, like, more recently they've done a good job of bouncing out humor. Like, still having humor in it, but not letting it, like, overtake it. Like, some scenes in certain Marvel movies, not all Marvel movies, but, you know, some Marvel movies. Yeah. But, uh, I'm gonna say, like, for instance, like, once again, like, the Justice League talking shit, like... When Superboy's there, they're they're like the president is going down the street, and they're like on they're on like uh they're on a security detail, and what was it like a green air green green lantern has like a bazooka right there pointed at like a Superboy. He's just like just give me the word, give me the word. Ben's like take this shot. One more was like don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the humor never really, it never has gotten really too in the way in those DCU ones. Because that's always my fear is because Marvel does the problem where they can go so far that it goes from being like you're watching a serious, you know, superhero action movie to being like, oh, it's almost like I'm watching a slapstick, you know, sarcastic Thor version three. of like the character that I, I thought was what I was getting into. Thor 3. Yeah, yeah. Thor, Thor 3 is just the one. It's just like. It's not the worst of the Marvel movies, but it's like the war like as far as the comedy goes, that one like does it worse than any of them. Like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. <laughs> as I said, so those yeah. movies like I got like the most mixed feelings about it because like when the action's in it and when things are cool, they are badass. But it's just like uh, I don't I know we 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 go on if Thor three gets brought up, it's like almost like 
I feel like I have like war flashbacks. That means like, oh, don't bring it back up. I'll go, I'll go down the tangent of like all the things in it that are just kind of like, why, why, why make those decisions? Yeah, so, uh, wow, we, we always bring, and then, we can't ever talk about a Marvel movie without talking about, or we can't ever talk about DC without, well, like, in a Marvel movie, I generally like Marvel, but yeah, yeah I get what you mean, though. It, but this, I think, since they are very sparing with the comedy, it works when they use it. Mm -hmm. You know, and these Justice League ones sometimes have a little bit more than some of the other ones, but it's still never too bad, you know, and, most, and mostly all the jokes do generally work. There's never, like, those cringy jokes or anything like that where you're like, oh, you kind of just, like, broke the fourth wall. Well, they also, I noticed they always amplify the characters' personalities whenever they're in a group. Like, Flash is way more of the family man who's kind of funny, but he's a little bit more of the, uh, he's kind of funny, but he's a lot more, like, just, like, kind of in some ways just naive. Uh, Green Lantern, way more of the smart ass. Batman, way more of just the oh, smart, 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 smart. Wonder Woman, way more of the woman. The woman. <laughs> that's like the that's really like what it comes down to. It's like, what's Wonder Woman? What's her more like extreme ability? Well, she's more womanly, you know. Yeah. And that, that that's her one. Martian Manhunter. He's more alien. Smart. <laughs> well, there's even the part like going to the end, like when uh, when like you know to dismiss any of like, well, where where'd they go at the same time? Why didn't we put that together? Where it's just like, oh, it looks like Clark Kent, who we thought was dead, is still alive, and he was found by Superman here. And then, like, Superman leans in very stiffly. He's just like, I saw Mr. Kent from the newspaper, and I thought, oh, I should bring him back home. And then, like, it cuts and zooms out on TV. He's like, Martian Manhunter does not know how to pretend to be me. <laughs> I know, I like that. Just, just so, like, stiff. I like, whatever. I guess that's our best choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they finally they brought Martian Manhunter back in because Martian Manhunter literally got the boot at one point. It was like there was that point in the Justice League where like Martian Manhunter just shows up to work or whatever and stuff and all of a sudden he sees in the seat and it's just like Cyborg sitting there and he's just looking around like the fuck? What the fuck's going on, like, guys? Oh. Well, you, you you know Cyborg, right? Yeah, but what's he doing in my fucking chair? Martian fucking Manhunter. They're like, well, you know. Why is he talking like Mick Mars from fucking <laughs> <Motley> Crew? <Crew? laughs> Martian Manhunter. He's in my or fucking Buffalo chair. <laughs> Just like, they're like, they're like, oh, yeah, uh, well, you know, the Justice League can only hold seven. Just saying. I mean, have you tried to squeeze like an eighth chair in here? It's all awkward. It gets, you're bumping elbows and, you know, Batman has those like little like shin guard things, whatever they are, you know, they're called gauntlets. Okay, whatever, Bruce. You know, you don't want to like bump shoulders with that. Like, yeah, well, we could just get a bigger table. Oh, it's mounted to the steel ground. Yeah, we can't do that, man. Sorry. <laughs> just like Marsha Manhunter's like, is this what you people call affirmative action? Is that what this is? <laughs> I read about this in your planet. It's like, oh, geez, here we go again. He's like, you know that I'm a green person. Oh, yeah. And I'm the last. Oh, yeah. Marsha, we, we, we know you're green. You're the last of your kind. You know. But you're, here, here's the thing. You're not human. <laughs> so so you don't matter. <laughs> You know how in a video game, if you shoot a hu another human and there's blood, it's a mature game, but if you shoot another alien and blood, guts, and everything else go everywhere and it's an E-Raid game? Yeah, see? Same thing. Same fucking thing. <laughs> Nobody he's gives a fuck like, about your people. Then, like, <laughs> he's just looking at him dumbfounded like, I don't think he's ever played Jet Force Gemini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of the most violent games ever, but they're not people, so it's okay. Even though that game's teen, I think, but... Um... It's teen, but yeah. It always made me laugh. I'm like, that game is like so like a mature rated game, and I don't know how it gets away. The only thing that like the only thing that makes it like is you can. I think the only thing that makes it push up to the teen is that there's a little like cute cuddly animal things you can kill. Still not people, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you could, but you can brutally murder them if you decide not to save them. You can shoot a baby's head off in that. Yeah, that's how many games you can't even do that in Grand Theft Auto. Like, there's actually literally a thing where in that game where if you fuck up, cause you, that was one thing. Whenever those things were in the area, you're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Especially they come running out to you in the middle of the crowd. Like, and when you first play the game, it's like almost like space now. I'm like, it's coming right for me, man. <laughs> oh, shit. I was supposed to save that. So it's like, I don't know what it was going to do. Was it, it going to con Mikazi me or some yeah, shit? Yeah, like, you know? you know, it's like, <laughs> sorry, I don't know why I started having these like Apocalypse Now flashbacks. Like, is that child bringing a grenade or is that child bringing me a candy? I'm not too sure. <laughs> Rolling Stones Paint It Black starts to play? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. 
Anim- like uh, Animal's House of the Seasons or some shit like that. Yeah, at one moment we were getting a tan. It was nice. We're in the jungle. Next thing you know, it's dark, crazy, and creepy, and guns just firing off everywhere. And no one knows what they're shooting at. Tell you, space nom with the bugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No joke. No, but like, uh, going back to this, though, because there was that period where they just kind of did cast them aside, and I do like that now they're at this point where... It's just kind of like the Just League is getting kind of big again, which I like. And some people say it might seem overcrowded, but I was just... I won't go all off about this, but I was just re-reading the um, new uh, Scott Snyder Justice League. Mm-hmm. And the team in that, it's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, just like you'd expect. Then there's Flash, Jon Stewart, Green Lantern, mm-hmm. and then uh, Hawk Girl, the new Hawk Girl... And then Martian Manhunter and Cyborg. So See, that's like, kind of cool, because that's almost like Justice League the cartoon, but then you kind of throw in a couple of like other like kind of modern characters in there, too, just to top it all off. And they're working with like Justice League Dark, so Swamp Thing was in there for a second. Same thing was mis- with Detective Chimp and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. <laughs> Good old Detective Chimp. <laughs> He's having a big comeback. All it takes is a couple books to give someone a comeback, but yeah. So, going back to this... Um, Martian Manhunter is brought back in to the team. They, they installed another chair for him. He didn't get his old one. He didn't get his old one back, but they, they, they put a new one in for him. It's at the kids' table. <laughs> it's at the Teen Titans one. That's not in the same room, but... <laughs> there, so there's a monitor. And a bounce house. <laughs> With a soda fountain. <laughs> and all it has is orange soda. Oh no! But, um, no, it's, oh, yeah, I was to say, is there like a fire, like fire, like Mountain Dew soda? Because that would just be hilarious if that was just installed in there. But I don't think there is something like, like volcano hot black- candies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sprinkled everywhere. They're they're like thrown on the ground like peanut shells, like in an old fashioned bar. He's <laughs> like, no, my only weakness reminds me of my the fire reminds me of my family. <laughs> he's like, stand- oh come on, just one, just try one. He's like stand on the furniture like he's playing hot lava. <laughs> <laughs> to him, it is hot lava. <laughs> <laughs> no so um what'd you think of i mean what'd you think of this version of lex luther i actually like this lex luther i, I thought this one was pretty good because sometimes they kind of vary up lex luther here and there and you know i mean like lex luther could come in many packages he can kind of come in classic like he's you know just the evil scientist lex luther or then you start getting where like he's kind of businessman scientist lex luther but i kind of like it with the one where it is sort of like lex luther really isn't a bad guy it's just, he just really has something against Superman more than at the end of the day. You know, he's not like the perfect person, but he's not trying to make the world a bad place. He's actually trying to make the world a better place along with like Bruce Wayne and everything like that. But at the same time, it's just like, he just hates the idea of Superman coming in and stealing the thunder all the time. Yeah, I can see that. And I like this Lex Luthor. I think he's a good one, but I, I, I prefer my Lex Luthor being a little bit more of like, I mean, I don't know. I, there's already so many characters in this, so I guess it depends on how much screen time you can give each one. I like my Lex Luthor being just a little bit more masculine in the aspect of, like, I I like the idea that he's, like, bench pressing, like, you know, like, 300 pounds while doing math equations in his head. And then he's going to, like, take, like, you know, a quick, like, 20-second cold shower, throw on a suit, and then go talk finances, and then own the room, and then buy out half a fucking country. You know, I like that Lex Luthor. Yeah, I I agree. I call that the pinnacle of man, Lex Luthor, where he's just, like, Physically, he's the strongest. Mentally, he's the intelli- most intelligent. You know, like, he's got everything a, a human can be to, like, 100%. Like, that actually is my... I think that's the best way to kind of look at Lex Luthor, is he is, like, the pinnacle of man. That's that's Clancy Brown Lex Luthor from animated series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I th- that's... I think The Rock would be perfect <laughs> to fucking play him. I, I know everyone's on, on his up on, like, Black Adam, but I, I really think, and no offense to Jesse Eisenberg, but I really think... If they are going to continue doing whatever with, you know, this Justice League, or just have, like, you know, evil scheming little, like, Jesse Eisenberg, like, mm-hmm, I'm less than all of a sudden just rip his head off. Turns out it was a decoy. Like, <laughs> it, was just, it was just another clone. Oh, shit. You know what? You know what? I don't know if I said this on the show before, but here's some other shit you can do. At one point in time, it was actually in Death of Superman. I mean, I don't know, because I only read, like, a little bit of... I didn't read, read, read a lot of Superman at that time. But you're not dealing with Lex Luthor in that. You're dealing with Lex Luthor Jr., which is a redhead. Oh, that's right. What if you did some shit where just, like, that was just 
Junior. Junior's fucking shit up. We gotta bring Dad in. And Dad comes in, he's like, he's adopted! <laughs> yeah, get that redhead stepchild out of here. But Dad, I'll do better. Shut up, shut up boy! Just bitch slap him right off that yacht he's in at the end of Justice League. He turns a slay, like, alright, let's do this. Well, because that's really how, like, like, The Rock, I mean, I know some people kind of, I think some people are getting a little bit, like, burnt out on The Rock appearing and everything. I never get burnt out on The Rock. The Rock is the new Arnold Schwarzenegger of movies this day and age. It's like, I, anything he's in, I'll go and see. And it's one of those ones, though, it's like, dude, he would be the ultimate Lex Luthor. Because I feel like he would embody everything about Lex. Just right off the bat. He'd have the strong, confident kind of appeal. Plus, you could just give him the intelligent thing over the top. Make him look slick wearing a suit and everything like that. Like, oh, that'd be amazing. Because I really, like, the animated series Lex Luthor, I always felt like he feels like he's kind of like somebody like The Rock. You know, he even has that kind of, he feels like a black guy in that show. And that's how I always kind of feel when you see that Lex Luthor. You know, where sometimes he's just like the, you know, super pale white guy. But um, not in the animated version. Or the Justice League Well, sometimes he... Sometimes he's just, like, the smartest guy in the room, which I like and I appreciate. And that's kind of what this one is. But, and, you know, there's that part where he grabs Marcy. He says, he's like, thank you for what? For this. And just throws her. <laughs> which is funny. I fucking laughed. But throws her in front of her, like, throws her, throws her in front of him to block the blast from the era uh, uh, eradicator. Mm -hmm. And just, like, I don't know. Even though I find that funny, at the same time, I feel like, you know. That wasn't really, that wasn't really a Lex Luthor move. It could be, depending on the writer. I think depending on the writer, you got, like, I don't know, I really like, like you like you said, I, my, my preference, because I guess there's so much of it, is either, like, you know, your standard rockish Tom Clancy, not Tim Clancy, uh, Clancy Brown Lex Luthor from the animated series, or uh, even Grant Morrison All-Star Superman mm -hmm. uh, Lex Luthor, where he's a mad scientist but he's still trying to reach that pinnacle of man, you know. He's still like, there's that part where he's just like, what? Are, like when like right when like Kent is writing about him, he's just like, what are you doing? What is that? Like, are you writing in code? I'll decipher it in under forty seconds. Time me. Watch. And he's just like, uh, it's shorthand. He's like, what kind of annotation is that for a man? Just tosses it and walks out the fucking room. Yeah, exactly. Like, his, he has like a ridiculous standard of what a person should be. Yeah, it's almost like Lex Luthor's almost kind of like, it's like Vince McMahon of like the WWE, because how many other guys own a company, you know, I mean, granted his dad had it like, you know, beforehand, but still, he took it from like being just like, you know, regular just circuit wrestling to, you know, worldwide, you know, giant pay-per-view and so on, but also is still jacked as fuck and wrestles and, you know, just does all kinds of stuff while still running the WWE this whole time and still making it bigger and better or, you know, well... Better as in, like, I guess it's always sure. it's always progressing, let's just say that. And now try to start up the XFL again. Yeah, exactly. It's just like one of those ones, like, that's almost kind of like the Lex Luthor attitude. It's like, you can you can be the boss and the guy who's in charge and the head honcho and still be buff and still get in the ring, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I can kind of I don't really know much about Vince McMahon, but I can see a little bit of Luthor in that right there. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those ones where it's just, I always just think Luthor is one of those kind of characters. I mean, granted, like, I know for, like, Superman movie-wise, he kind of got overplayed for a bit where it's kind of like, okay, we just want to see somebody else. We don't really, I don't really care who it is. We Anybody else. We put Toy Man in the next one. I'm fine with that. Live Wire. <laughs> oh, actually, Live Wire would be amazing. I think that's an awesome character from the animated series. I think she's a good secondary villain, not a good lead villain. Yeah, it's definitely more of a secondary character, but I would say this, I would take that, if that was the, if that was the main one, you got Lori Petty to come in, ready to go. I'm there. Metallo. I want Metallo. Yeah. But um, but it's one of those ones, at the end of the day, though, like, Lex Luthor is just one of those characters that's just, all, like, when done right, I just think is just one of those really interesting people. And it's it's that weird one, too, where, like, it sounds strange to say this, but he's somebody, you, like, I feel like as a human you can look up to really well is Lex Luthor. You know, he has that, like, almost Mandez type person. Now, I know some people are like, okay, you know, you can't be looking up to Mandez like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, yeah, Mandez had some crazy plans, but here's the thing, though, world's smartest man. There's certain qualities you can pull from. Yeah, like, I, I love Ozzy Van. That's, like, my favorite character in, you know, The Watchmen. Well, him and the comedian. I'm curious, I'm curious what they're gonna... You're, like, you're, like, the you're like, you're like the two most hated characters <laughs> in The Watchmen. I don't know what it is. Like, those are the two characters. I look at those characters. I'm like, dude, they're right there. Those are, my, those are the best characters. So, Grant, Grant, I like them all, but, like, oh, man, Ozzy Mandez and the comedian. Like, you combine those two guys together. Well, that's just... That's the Joker right there. <laughs> yeah, you go... It's like Joker meets Lex Luthor. 
Maybe, well, yeah, God, that is kind of like that. But um, but yeah, we, we, we went far off track on our Lex Luthor-ness of it all. But uh, but yeah, he does have some moments in here, like almost like when he takes Mercy and throws her in front. I feel like that was one of those weird ones where it's almost used more as a gag than anything else. Granted, mm-hmm. if like they were running out of a building and there was like you know a bear behind him, he's like the kind of guy who would trip the person behind him just to make a sacrifice. I I would get that, but I felt like that one mm-hmm. still seemed like a little bit of a goopy choice. Mm-hmm. Well, there's even some good moments he has where they they for a minute make the people think that. The Justice League is dead because they get an attack from Apocalypse and they send him in this portal. And even Lex Luthor for me is like, are they fucking dead? Like, not in a, those were my friends, but in a, oh shit, we, we kind of need them. I fucking hate them, <laughs> but right now we need them. And when he brings them back, I like how, like, I think it was Cyborg, he gets back and he says, um, he, he, he says, I'm like, Luthor, you brought us back? Like, don't add me to your friends list just yet. <laughs> this was strictly professional. Yeah, it's all business here. Now do your jobs and save yeah, these like, like, now do your jobs. What am I paying you for? Oh, you're not paying me. Yeah. <laughs> I know, because that's that, kind of the thing, too. It's like you have the Justice League kind of in there, but I think it was kind of a smart idea just to, like, yeah, you know what, let's just boom tube them away for a little bit, just throw them on some, like, deserted planet with a bunch of, like, killer monsters. And it just oh. kind of gets them out of there so that we can focus a little bit more on our new Superman characters. Yeah, I think that makes sense because, you know, we already have them in a lot of other things. And also it amplifies the stakes because it's like, well, I'm pretty sure the Just League could find a way to knock out all these little, like, knockoff Apocalypse Superman things. That Like, there's that part, which I don't remember, I, I don't know, I actually never read The Reign of the Superman. I never. I only read The Death of Superman. But when they start throwing those little things on their chest to make them like Superman, Cyborg Superman starts handing those things out and he's got people convinced that he is Superman. And it's actually, like, Hank Henshaw, who, in the comics, was, like, a, a knockoff, was, like, a parody of Reed Richards from years back. But then they just brought him back, like, who's he actually going to be? You know, let's just make him this guy. Where in this, they just made him an astronaut. Uh, the, the, the guy who was just, like, like Superman obsessed. He's like, oh, I had one bad day because he couldn't save me. So now it's just like, I'm, everything bad about Superman is his fault. Yeah, it does have kind of that. I mean, granted, Apocalypse does put it more into his mind that he's got to hate Superman. So I was like, okay, I, I guess I can believe that. If it was just strictly based without Apocalypse there, I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a lot. Like, you know, Superman, like, he was saving everybody else and he couldn't save me and my wife who are in space. <laughs> and I think what they were, they were even like on a date when that happened. He's just like, you just hear some screaming, Superman will save us, like in the back of his ear. Like, here's some Clark. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Just turn the radio up just a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, one of those. Oh, Ace of Spades. <laughs> da, na, 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 na. Just got it. <laughs> because at some point, like, does he got to do, like, the thing that, like, Daredevil does where he, like, has to get into, like, a like a water tank so he can't hear anything when he tries to go to sleep? That's got to be a thing. I'm, there's got to be some Superman story. Because I know they, they always say that, like, he hears everything at once and he can't save everybody. So that's the thing that haunts him. But sometimes he just kind of brush that under the rug. So I'm just having trouble imagining him just being, like, <laughs> like, just hearing some, like, child, like, in Afghanistan screaming, Help me, Superman! He's like, like you know, I'm on the last level of Mario right now. I really... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, those ones, sometimes it's like, Oh, no, like, when I think of Superman's powers, you can kind of think of him like, he has, like, the almost, like, almighty god Superman powers. Or then I just think of him, like, I I call it the Mario Kart powers, where he's like Mario, and he's got very even stats. You know what I mean? And I think that's my favorite way to look at it. Like, he's not the fastest guy, but he's really fast. He's not the strongest one, but he's really strong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of that thing where it's like, you know, Batman's smarter than him, Flash is faster than him, you know... Aquaman and Wonder Woman are stronger than him, but the thing about Superman is he's got the he's got the well-rounded stats, like just like Super Mario or something like that. And I like to think that like Wonder Woman, his hearing, Wonder like Woman he Flash. probably doesn't hear. Like I like to seem like that almost seems like a little bit ridiculous. Like I feel like he doesn't hear somebody maybe in Afghanistan. Maybe he can hear everybody in Metropolis, but like I like to kind of keep it to like a reasonable level. Yeah, not not godlike Superman, more just like he has enhanced enhanced powers. You know, like I'll say this really like kind of like the Daredevil thing, almost like okay, I'm gonna go sleep in this tank. Hmm. Well, he's definitely stronger than I think, like Wonder Woman or Aquaman, because he's a, he's flat out pushed like a planet. But then again, but that's it like comes and God goes Superman's so kind of like I feel, yeah. you know, what I mean, it's kind of like when you have like the almost like Batman, where like he almost feels like he's more of a superhero than like a regular person with just like well trained mm-hmm. abilities. 
Like, I feel like when you get those kind of characters, there's kind of like, I feel like there's the God version of them. And then there's sort of like the, the regular, like almost like Casey Jones, like, <laughs> like maybe not the Casey Jones. Like that, that's more like, it's <laughs> like the low end, but like, kind of like, I feel like there's the Batman where it kind of like, you know, maybe if I, if I put the years in and I had the skills and I had the resources, I could be Batman. And then there's sometimes the Batman's written like, well, granted, nobody's going to be this person. This person really is somebody who has superpowers who's just lying about this whole time. <laughs> Yeah, the thing about Batman is most of the time, I mean, I want to say that Bat God came around probably somewhere around the 80s. Like, I think 80s is when Bat God came in, because that's when Frank Miller was writing this fucking beast of a man who was just, even though he's like 70 and falling apart, just popping some painkillers, <laughs> strapping on an arm brace like, good enough, <laughs> yeah. and getting the job done. <laughs> We just put on the trunks and you're set. <laughs> Come on, woman. <laughs> well, and, and that's why I mean is like is I feel like it's like do you want to have sort of like that? And that's why I I like the Superman who's kind of like just toned down just a little bit. And as I said, I, I use the Mario Kart stats. I think that's the that's the best way to kind of define him. He's Mario, where he's got even across the board. You know what I mean? He's not the heaviest mm -hmm. character. He's not the lightest character. Doesn't have the best agility, but he's pure even across. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of like, yeah, I think that's kind of how you also plays an injustice also, so yeah. yeah exactly, yeah, there, there we go, that, that's a good way about it, like the injustice way he plays. But, um, mm -hmm. but God, where do we leave off in the movie part? I'm so lost now. We're just not even going in the order, we're just talking about different parts of our characters. That's true, that's true. And then there's always, like, I do like that Eradicator Superman a lot, because I know that's the one that, like, at first glance, you kind of look at it and go, who the hell is that Superman? Like, you know, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you just see this guy in the cover, it's just like, he's got, like, weird, like, computer-like glasses on, like, he's just been up all night, like, playing fucking, like, Medal of Honor, <laughs> you know, online or something <laughs> like that in, like, the 90s. And you're like... EverQuest? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, one of those kind of guys who had, like... And it's just like, oh, that's kind of a weird one. But I like the idea that, like... He's this, he's literally like Punisher Superman who will go to anything to stop like a criminal, but he's really just there just to protect the real Superman that makes sure nothing happens to him. But by that standard, that Superman's like almost like, well, super, while real Superman's sleeping, you know, Eradicator Superman's out there taking care of everything. He's like the Tyler Durden for that for Superman almost. <laughs> <laughs> he get, I'm everything you wish you could be. You wish you had cool sunglasses like this. <laughs> you wish you could kill somebody. I can do that. We just cut to Superman, like, some, like, security camera footage of him punching himself, like, dragging himself by the, by the hair through, like, a wall or some shit like that. Well, because even when Superman wakes up in the movie, like, the Iraq hair pretty much is gone. <laughs> He's still there for a minute. He's there for, like, a moment, uh, like, he goes back in the crystal. It's like, you go back in your Pokeball. Eradicator, come back! <laughs> Good job, Eradicator. <laughs> he even sounds like a Pokemon name, almost. Eradicator! <laughs> Eradicator, Eradicator! No, he even, well, that character, he, um, well, the whole thing with him is he's like a, uh, he's essentially a robot that was just kind of an autopilot with no, like, moral or conscience. Just like, it's bad. Superman don't like. Superman will kill. So Superman would stop. So bad. But then he would just, like, go to the next level of killing, which Superman seemed kind of like, there's only two little things about this. Superman just seemed kind of like, you know, this guy killed some people and he did it uh, dressed as you. Like, well, that's weird. Well, go back to your crystal. <laughs> I go, that's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then like Superboy, who general, who I generally liked, he was a little kind of like, suit, like you know, flat out like turned a blind eye to let Luther killing like that one scientist. Like you didn't tell him, Luther, he he's your son. He's like, no, oh, I guess you got a point. I was gonna kill you, boy, but I'm not gonna do it now. Oh, by the way, uh, Devin, you're fired. Like leashes a bunch of fucking monsters on him, and they just leave the room. Just like. Huh, okay. You know, it's like, I'm pretty sure, I think that would have been a moment where Superboy just went against, would have gone against Dad, really. But that's some, it's one scene in the movie. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he's still, like, at that point, like, huh, I wonder what the, I wonder what's going on there. I didn't know that uh, Uncle Joe in there was playing up the monsters again. Oh, yeah. Sure. He's just super oblivious to everything that happens. I'm gonna go back to watching Friends. Yeah. Oh, Fresh Prince is on. I'm gonna learn some new slang. Oh, brother to brother off Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Keenan and Kelton. There's a new episode of Keenan and Kellon. Oh, oh, don't tell him that that show that show is old. What? Yeah, he thinks that this is all brand new TV. It saves us tons of money and cable bills. 
don't show them any. It's like you can afford anything you want. You just give them like this VHS of all these old like '90s shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lex, 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 Lex is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the thing. He may be my son or half son or love child or my two dads, whatever you want to call it. But um, here's the thing. He's a, he's coming from a rich family. He's got to grow up right. <laughs> he's not. Can't ha he can't have streaming at once. He starts off with '90s VHSs. We'll work our way from there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He this way, he'll have respect once he gets to, you know, being able to have all these choices in life. I don't want him to be like those other fucking ten-year-olds you see out there who just think that everything just comes with a click of a button. I'm just gonna work up for it, like I did. So for now, he has to settle for old episodes of all that. Don't tell him. Don't don't let <laughs> don't let him see a new episode of SNL. He's gonna he's gonna assume why Keenan suddenly got twenty years older. Nah, this movie. I mean. Well, I liked, uh, we didn't really talk much about Cyborg Superman. What'd you think about him? Um, like, I think that's one of those characters, I, I always have loved the look of Cyborg Superman. I think it just looks really badass and menacing and so on. And this one, I think they do do kind of an interesting way, because I always like to think that, like, if you have no idea who this character is, and this is your first time watching it, and he kind of comes in and is like, yo, Lois, it's me, you know, I, they put me back together in space. Who put you back together in space? Uh, somebody. Shut up, you don't know. But, uh, yeah, when I was in space, some, you know, robots came by and, you know, put me back together. Like, what, was that sound illogical? What, you gonna judge me? Like, you're getting off the defensive. I'm not even questioning well, it. Okay, was the I'm first just place saying. I, went on a date. I, I don't know, Lois. I'm like half machine. I lost all those memories. <laughs> yeah, why? You still judging me? You still think I'm plotting something evil? Well, I mean, when, when you say it that way. Oh, you, you, you fucking bitch! Like, uh, I'm not even questioning you. You're, you're so just like digs himself in the hole. <laughs> yeah, so they, they kind of do that. I mean, like, it's one of those ones. It, it, I feel like if you had absolutely no idea who that character is, it would have some kind of interesting, like, oh, maybe that, oh, maybe that is Superman. You know what I mean? Like, if you really just didn't know that Superman comes back, you know, I think there could be something kind of cool. Maybe knowing some of those twists, I do think some of the things he does is kind of, it just sounds kind of funny. Or the fact that it's just like really like, you know, like me and my wife were out on a date and you couldn't save me, Superman. Like, I paid my Superman insurance and I got nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, there is no Superman insurance. <laughs> what, what am I giving the $200 away to every single month? That video in front of that, that YouTube ad fucking lied to me. <laughs> yeah, it said that if I pay $200 a month, I'm covered from Superman so that, you know... Shit, I was I was walking across I was walking out on like high rise buildings just on the side, no like safety straps or anything, you know? When I rode a roller coaster, I never pulled the bar down. I just lived the life. I had Superman <laughs> insurance. Hey Kim Shaw lives on the edge. I was gonna get it tattooed on my bicep. <laughs> He's like, I, I literally had no fear. Like when I went to space, I didn't even wear a spacesuit. <laughs> Why? For a while I was only wearing no fear clothing. <laughs> Yeah, put my boxer shorts on, grabbed the bag of Cheetos and went into space and just saw what happened. I was bl I was blasting <laughs> What's Up Danger just on repeat for the last couple of months. Yeah, I know it's Spider-Man, but shit, that's how I was feeling. <laughs> shit, that's why it didn't save me. I was blaring the Spider-Man song. Yeah, I don't know, same character, right? Same colors. Red and blue? What? Yeah, fights for freedom, justice, American way, you got it. Whatever. Works Works still, I want to know where's that two hundred dollars going to? That that guy on YouTube, like, he had really high quality videos too. I mean, it wasn't one of those cheap ones where the guy looked like he was, you know, selling an ad in like his bathroom. You, it's always funny when you see those entrepreneur ads. Yeah, it's like I, I just I, I where, feel like I can't trust an entrepreneur that looks like they have less money than me. Well, there's one where it's like a dude where it was like it was like two guys like on like a balcony at a beach, but it was just kind of like standard, like kind of shaky stuff. He's like, okay, here's the thing that a lot of people are gonna try to tell you. They're gonna try and w bedazzle you with like graphics and this and that. But I'm just gonna tell you straight up what you need. And he has like a fucking whiteboard he brought out. <laughs> it's just like, it's like you can't even afford a graphic or anything. You have to do this whiteboard shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like whenever I see those ones, I'm like, like, I mean, like, granted, there is, like, always the douchey guys, like, look at me, look at me, I'm naked on a Lamborghini, and you can too, you know, and it's like, there's those guys, but then it's like, I, I kind of want, I like the halfway ones, where I can tell somebody's well off, and I can, I can see, like, oh, okay, these guys know what they're doing, they, they're just, 
literally making YouTube videos so that they can make training tutorials that, you know, work for affiliate marketing and then selling more stuff. Okay, I get how that works. But when you get the ones where it's just like, what? This guy looks like he's like, almost like at any moment now, his dad's going to bust in the room and be like, Billy, what are you doing? Are you filming yourself jerking off again? <laughs> Did you rent that Lamborghini outside? Yeah, like, you know, you better not use my credit card for that. The steel mill ain't paying for it. He's like, well, I, I don't have enough money to hire an editor now, so you have to keep this in here. <laughs> I would love if that was like the, like, that was an ad. Like, this guy's just getting berated by his dad. His dad's slapping him around. His dad's totally like Bruce Springsteen song dad coming in, and this kid's just like blowing money trying to make himself look cool. <laughs> It's <laughs> still the ad still playing. Like the idea that he he went the distance of not only letting the video continuously play, actually uploading it and paying that like Google to have that ad up there. Dad's full on like belt off, beating him to the point where he just punching him a few times. Even the link still in the corner of the screen. <laughs> it still has, even has like the annotations of Flash to like his website and so on. It's that point where it's like, you know, there's usually that thing that counts down. Like, you can skip this ad, like, five, in five seconds. Four. Then you're like, then you're like even if it passed the five-second mark, like, no, 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 I want to see where this goes. <laughs> yeah, like, in fact, I might even click on this, the sense of money this way, just to see uh, more of this happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I want to fund Billy's dad right now. Or <laughs> YouTube sensation dad, he's got to beat the fuck out of me. Can do! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but yeah, Superman. Yeah, Superman. God damn. Once again, I feel like <laughs> so, I forgot where we left off at. Or what happens to Cyborg Superman? Oh yeah, Cyborg Superman. I don't really know enough about him, and he's not a character they bring back too often. I want to say of all the Superman books I have, he's maybe in there once, but he's only in. He's like one of those characters. Like he's a big part of his history, but they don't use him too frequently, as far as I can tell. No, it's it's him and the Eradicator really don't get a whole lot. And even John Steele doesn't, like, those three characters kind of don't. I mean, Superboy does, just because he's Superboy, he's in the Teen Titans. But if it wasn't for the well, they, Teen they, Titans, you probably would never see Superboy. Well, no, you still probably would. Have, they, they do try to bring in, like, John like uh, John Irons every so often. Well, I know they kind of, like, in one of the newer, in the Rebirth ones, they kind of brought him back a bit. But I, I feel like New 52, he was never even there. He was. He was the very beginning of. Um, he was the very beginning of of of, uh, of Grant, uh, Morrison? Grant Morrison's run in action comics. Because while well, Brainiac's attacking, he's a LexCorp uh, employee, and he takes some time. Um, he takes some time. Just puts some puts a suit together. He helped kind of like create Metallo to some extent, but regretted it. So he oh, that's put some right. Shit I, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he has any solo books going on right now, but he's always pops in for me like, hey, what's up? And they try to bring him back, and he's such a cool character. Yeah. He's essentially Superman Iron Man. But they never really – Superman Iron Man Thor, kind of. Yeah, it really they never is. Really do, they never do a whole lot with him. And I, I'd like to see him do more things. I always thought he was a cool character. Yeah, well, it's like I just, just I just think all these characters actually are really cool. They all, they, you know, in, in a sense, at first glance, they all look like knockoff characters, but I feel like they're all knockoffs done really well. Mm hmm. There's even that part where I like when he first goes back, when they go back to the Fortress of Solitude, because he thinks that Cyborg's, not Cyborg's, human, he thinks um, the Eradicator might be fucking things up, and he realizes that uh, he's talking about, like, look, man, there's some asshole going out there dressed like you, posing as you. Then he just, like, Superman just looks at him, he sees the S on his chest. So, well, not like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's wearing a cape and everything. And then it's like, and I, then I love the part too where it's like, Superboy's like, Lex, I'm leaving you. It's like, I'm going to my other dad's house. You're, you're fine. Well, guess who's not getting Christmas presents this year, hmm? Maybe your other dad can buy you some nice ones. Oh, wait, he's just got a reporter's salary. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting your own Disney World now. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to settle for the, the regular version of Xbox One, not even the Elite. <laughs> 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 no PlayStation you, VR for you this year. <laughs> you looks like you're have to settle for the Oculus Rift. <laughs> well, that'd be the more expensive one, technically. Is that a that, was that one's like eight hundred one. bucks? What the fuck? I mean, it could be a little bit cheaper by now, but that one plus then you got to have a really powerful computer to go with it too, so it makes it kind of expensive when you think about it like that. I thought it was. A, I thought Are it was you thinking of the Samsung one? System. 
I don't know. I thought the Oculus Rift was. Well, I don't know. I feel I will. I know we keep getting off Superman, but I, I was, I'll say this real quick. I felt bad for Oculus Rift because it was the one that got the ball rolling and the graphics were a little outdated, but it was like the most smoothest one. And then PlayStation's like, we can up that up, you know, and then, uh, but, but you know, they made it a lot cheaper and a lot than everybody else and Oculus got kind of left in the dust. Unless that one's still moving along. I think, as far as I, I think knew, that one, I if you're a PC gamer, that one's still really popular. And then there's the other one for PC, because there's two big ones for PC. There's Oculus, which is really the one that got the ball rolling. And then there's the other company, I'm drawing a blank on them, but they're the ones that actually are, I think, taking it even kind of farther, sort of. They're kind of the popular hip one to have, where Oculus, I guess, is like your old man's vir virtual reality, where there's other companies like the Sega of nowadays, if it was like Sega in the 90s. And then PlayStation yeah. just makes it easily accessible for like people at home as long as you got the PS Plus, but... Or whatever the heck. No, even well, most Pro. by this point, most most VR games. I know it's a stepping stone. We'll get there. Most VR games are just physic physics puzzles or stand in place and shoot some shit. So, cause, you know, when I first heard like, oh, is this gonna be like a Batman VR game? Like, oh, you just kind of stand in place and throw batterings, or you just kind of like have to solve a puzzle right there in place. There's never there's very little moving around and that kind of shit. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, yeah. He's no VR, no VR for Superboy. Yeah, he ain't getting those presents now since he went to uh, most, since he went to go live with other dad. To your head. <laughs> and most will get the phone and you get a strap to your head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, like Superboy shows up to the Fortress of Solitude because he just seems to know where it is. I guess maybe it's just maybe it's, maybe it's just a Superman thing just programmed in there. Maybe maybe it's just like you know. Uh, what you call it, like, genetic memory or whatever they call it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Joe Rogan talks about it. <laughs> like one of those ones where like an animal just always knows its way, you know, back to migration or something like that. Some shit like that, yeah. Like people assume that you're not, the reason why people are naturally afraid of the dark is just like genetic memory of people standing by a campfire getting attacked by saber-toothed tigers or some bullshit. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, I guess technically if you went outside and did that nowadays and every single night spin it out in the woods... By the campfire, there there is that high chance that well, not high chance, but there is that. Chance. I guess it could still happen, but I guess there's that fear of monsters when you're a kid, and like monsters aren't real. Where does that come from? And you know, I guess just that idea of just genetic, and memory of just placed in you, of just like it's dark. This happens at night, you know. Yeah, or well, it also can be like it's, it's like in hostiles how it doesn't matter who you run into out in the middle of the old west, it's never a good thing. Yeah, pretty much. One, one of those kind of things. But um, once they get Superman <laughs> out of his chamber, this is like one of those things that I was like, I love like, the way that all the superheroes looked in the DC, like in the 90s and late 80s. I almost wish that, like, to me, I consider that to me is their, like, definitive look. Like, Superman with the long mullet is just, like, so badass. And even, like, when he, because, you know, in the 90s, he kept that for a while. Like, I have one of the action figures of Superman where he's got the long mullet, and it's just, like, it's such a cool look, but he's got the regular, like, red and blue suit on. You know, mm -hmm. when Dick Grayson had the fuck, when he was, like, man-wing, like, that's just so badass looking. I, like, and, you know, Aquaman, you know, with the, you know, with the blonde mullet and, like, you know, missing the arm and everything, or the hand and everything like that. Like, I think all those characters are so cool. I mean, even, like, you know, Wonder Woman had, like, the big, thick, curly hair. Like, she was, like, um... Got a perm out of, like, she was, like, just got out of, like, a 80s concert. Yeah, exactly. Like, one of those ones. Like, even she looked pretty badass like that. I just, I love that, like, the look of all those characters. She went through, like, a Cher phase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. Which, Cher, I always feel, looks kind of like Paul Stanley from Kiss, too, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Stanley's a little prettier. Yeah, I think so. But um, or was. But it's like one of those looks. Like I always just kind of wish that someone would bring that lo that look back. You know what I mean? Like, because we've kind of had clean cut Superman and clean cut Batman and everything like that for quite a while. But there's something like that rugged look that they had, especially in that early '90s to about mid '90s phase, is just like totally badass. You know, uh, I heard. Um, well, I, what made me happy was. Um... And I know a lot of people shit on Henry Cavill, but um, seeing seeing Superman with a beard and hairy chested, I was like, "Fuck yes!" Agreed. <laughs> that to me is like that's all man Superman. He's just man man, no super needed. Exactly, he just rips a flannel off instead and just has barrel chested out there. Well, Chris Cornell plays in the background. <laughs> exactly, that's my kind of Superman. But no, I think that's it. Was just... it Chris Cornell? No, it's it? Pearl Jam. Yeah, it was that Chris one. Cornell. It's Pearl Jam in the. Man of Steel. For some reason, I want to picture it being Chris Cornell, but it's Pearl Jam. 
pretty sure it was Chris Cornell, I think. So. Yeah, because it was a song off the single soundtrack. That's why it was Chris Cornell. Well, maybe it's got both in there then. Maybe there is a Pearl Jam one as well. It's it's Seasons. I remember that's the song. I think that's Chris Oh, Cornell. off of, yeah, the single soundtrack. You're right. It's like an eight-minute song or some shit. But um, yeah. but I just I just think uh, it's one of those ones like I think that's just a cool look, you know, like like Batman. I don't think technically needs the long hair look. I feel like that doesn't, in a sense, fit the Bruce Wayne. When he has to tuck it into a cowl, anyway. Yeah, so it's kind of that's kind of goofy. But I feel like Superman just looks really cool with long hair. I think Nightwing actually looks better with long hair. Like I even if he's got the kind of the ponytail, like I just think Nightwing looks cooler when he's got the long hair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he kind of comes and goes the long hair. I want to say he has it right now, or at least a mid-range. Oh, does he? Kind of like that happy medium. I think I want to say he has that happy medium. Okay. Granted, he just got shot in the head, but he's probably going to be back alive in a week or so. Yeah. Because so, yeah. it's like, he, cause he hasn't had it, like, since, like, the last time he had it was, like, 1996. They, like, kind of, other than the animated series, like, because he had the ponytail one in that one, they kind of got rid of that for a long time, and he just had, like, the normal, like, what we, like, the traditional, like, modern-day Nightwing look, the one we know to this day and age, not the gold, I like this one, he's got the gold suit and everything like that from, like, the Teen Titans, like, 86 to, like, 96 era. Like, he just got back from a disco thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like, disco Nightwing one. I've always wanted to have an action figure of that, but it's really expensive to find one. Is it, like, just from that era, or just, like, it's very rare to find that particular, like, a new version of that model? Uh, there's, like, one new version that came out, like, five or six years ago of that one, but it's, like, one of those ones where it's, like, 50 bucks or something. Like, it's like, oh. That's, I've seen it worse, but, you know, it's, like, a golden price. Not to be that devil on your shoulder, but that thing. Yeah, well, it's one now. of those ones where it's, like, when it's, like, a DC action figure, when you know that, like, its retail price was probably only, like, $15, <laughs> that's when you're kind of, like, Thir oh. Is it the DC, is it like the one where it has like the, the orange background, it says like DC Universe or something like that, and they just had like six figures per line, something kind of like that? It might have been one of those ones. I can't remember exactly what the backing of it looked like, but um, it, 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 yeah, de it definitely those... was, because it, it was more like a normal action figure, you know what I mean? Not like a kid's action figure, but not like a highly detailed like statue or anything. It was just a normal action figure. Doesn't like shoot a missile or no bullshit. No, like that. no, not not that. Even though that'd be pretty badass. If that was one of the case, if it was like a 1995 one where you're shooting a missile, I'd be fine with that. But it's weird because then there's some action figures. Like when I bought like the Huntress one to complete like my Total Justice collection, it was like I paid like five dollars for her in the box. <laughs> felt, it's like boy, I'm, like that's the collection you don't want to have. It's like well, that's I, probably you how you much it out for a minute. Probably cost. What was oh, that? when I said I bought the Huntress figure for like the Total Justice ones from the 90s. It was like, I only paid $5 mm -hmm. for it in the box. And I was like, oh, that, that's the kind that, like, if that was what you were investing in at the time period, it'd be like, oh, that never came back around. Plus that character. I don't know. It just seems so weird. Like, well, it seems weird they throw a Huntress in there. Well, it's weird because there's, there's not a there's not a Wonder like Woman one in that Total Justice set. Really? Mm -hmm. That's fucking weird. Well, at that time period, too, it was like, it was, it was that weird thing where it was, it sounds weird, but for action figures for boys, it was hard to find female characters. I don't know what it was. It, well, else they just didn't really want to make one, female. I think it's like, well, boys not gonna play a Wonder Woman. Well, you might think Hunters is kind of hot though. I don't know. It's nineties. <laughs> well, it's also one of those things about. Um, there's also she was kind of like, uh, more of an anti-hero kind of character. So like you know she's gonna fucking sell. She's the anti-hero. Same with Robin. You know <laughs> that whole action figure line. Well, yeah, because it's weird. But, it's a weird um, line because it's like Doomsday. Um, or no, no. Um, not Doomsday. It's Batman. It's Batman. It's Batman. Robin, Robin. Green Lantern. Flash. But it, it's Green Lantern. Um. Uh, Kyle. Uh, Rainer. Kyle Rayner. Green Lantern. It's uh Superman. Flash. Uh, who the heck else? Huntress. Try to look over and see what see if I can see him from here. And then um, Aquaman's in there. Mullet Aquaman. It's Mullet Superman too. Can't forget that. Yeah, Mullet Superman. And then um. Yeah, Dark Side. Dark Side's the ones in there. And then I think there's there's like one other villain or so. I don't have the, I'm missing that one too, but uh Orion or some bullshit. So, something, something like that. Something like something like an Orion type character. You know. He's can kinda of go either way, really. So it's got that and then it's got like Huntress, and I think that's it for females. I, I really want to say that I don't think there's any other female. For some reason there's no Wonder Woman. I don't know why. Well there were those kids that would just be kinda of like, I don't I don't want a girl character. Well, why don't you want a girl action figure? Because it's fucking gay! You know, you, <laughs> you get those kind of kids every so often. And it'll be one of those things where it's like you might as well be playing with dolls, right? I can just totally see a dad looming over. I'm like, alright boy, pick any one you want. Not want the Wonder Woman one? Why? <laughs> you would. Might as well be a doll. 
Do you play with dolls, boy? <laughs> no, but I mean, I just, I need, I need Wonder Woman, so Batman and Super, like, no, no, you want, you, unless it's Wonder, Wonder Man. And yeah, we would talk about that, you know. Yeah. He's the, he's the boy in the Speedo, <laughs> two aisles down. <laughs> I love how it's like, it's okay for the boy to get the Wonder Man figure, and the guy just in a Speedo just ripped, but not the female. <laughs> See, that's the one you can just... See, look, it looks like he just won an Olympic like, medal for swimming. It's like, it's one of those ones you can be proud of setting that on your mantle. Believe me, like, when you invite a girl over, she's going to look at that and be like, damn, that's the guy I'm going to marry. She wants those calves. She wants that eight-pack. Yet aerodynamic for the water. <laughs> Dad, you seem to know an awful lot about this character. Well, you know me. I just, you know, I, I, tr I trust the ones that's all, you know, all about the athletics. <laughs> But a wo but a woman. I don't I don't get you, boy. If you want, we can go two aisles down. Yeah, we, we can go. Uh, go, we can go get you a Barbie. The aisle, it's all pink. You know what I mean? And you know, we get you your maxi pads all there at the same time. <laughs> we can get you a convertible for your fucking Malibu Barbie. How's that sound, huh? Well, you want to go to Malibu now? Look at me. I'm Malibu. I'm Malibu Billy now. I'm just sucking dick on the street. Look at me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this. <laughs> Why do you keep just pointing out this? I just want to buy, like, sh look at it. It's Wonder Woman. She's in battle armor. She's literally punching a guy's face in the ground. Yeah, it looks fucking gay. <laughs> so, okay, I'll take dark side. Now, every man's got a dark side to him, so I'll take that. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't know what it was. It was like, it was hard. I remember, like, finding, like, a, like, like, when you found, like, a female action figure. Like, I remember just for, like, the Jurassic Park ones. It felt like it was like, oh, this is kind of weird. Like, they don't make this normally. <laughs> Because even like the X Men ones, it was like, like you, like you, I never really even saw very often like a Storm action figure or a Rogue one. It was ironically, it was just all the men. It was just like man time. If you're maybe the the closest one you'd probably find is like Psylocke. She would get like the Huntress treatment where she was like the anti hero character section. Well, there's also uh, what was it? I remember because they they have like a Star Wars figure for everybody. But granted, in the '90s, even though there's all this expanded universe stuff. When you think about it, even with the expanded universe stuff, like here's the guy in the background of the bar. Yeah, you know, he gets his own figure. Because that's really, you would, I would actually buy those because I would try to build up a whole scene. So I need somebody for the cantina <laughs> back here. I need a who should probably get more than one stormtrooper because you just don't have the one stormtrooper walking through here. It's gonna be weird. You gotta get at least two stormtroopers to go through here. You know. Yeah, do a couple I remember, of them. Regardless of that, they're like. It's like, okay, what variation of Leia do you want? <laughs> All these characters, and at that point, it's like, what variation of Leia? And I remember my thing was like, well, I didn't want dress Leia, like dress from A New Hope, just because, it, well, I don't mind now, but at the time, I just like, <laughs> I didn't care for that version, just because, you know, she's in a big, white, flowy, she looked like a nun, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're like, who am I? And so, but the only one, it was, it was weird, it's like, the two polar opposites. It was Burka Leia from A New Hope. And then, I said episode one, but I meant episode four. I meant New Hope. Um, is either Burka Leia or Slave Leia. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I guess I'll go Slave Leia. And I'm just like, please don't. I was remember my mom, my mom was with me when I was a little kid. When I was buying it, she's, I was like, please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. I'm just doing it because I don't want Burka Leia. And I need a Princess Leia. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they didn't, they didn't have the, you know, Hoth Leia. Just saying, Mom. That, that was the one I was going to choose. But, you know, when push comes to slush, you know. Show up, I chose Slave Leia. Just don't judge me, Mom. It is kind of funny when you think about it. They sell this BDSM kind of like action figure. Yeah, it, it, well, it's like, and it's weird because, like, as a kid, I feel like you don't think too much of it. It's just like, oh, that's from the movie. You know, it's like, I think probably, like, as time goes on, it kind of goes like, oh, that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> well, you can think about it now as, like, well, you could, like, George Lucas would say some shit like, well, it's a throwback to Princess of Mars where Deja Thorez dressed like this. But it, really, it's just like, I want to see her in a fucking bikini. Why? Just just do it. We've waited two whole movies. Just just do it. It's not even the whole movie. Just for a moment. You're going to kill the slug. <laughs> I swear. you got to choke it with your chains. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> There's apparently, I'm not sure if this was in actual lore, but apparently when they were coming up with the character in that outfit, that was like a similar outfit that like Jabba's mother wore and he was like had some mother issues like Carrie Fisher actually said this like an NPR interview it's like oh man that got really fucked up <laughs> yeah Jesus Christ and I was like yeah that would push it to an NC-17 rating <laughs> so I left that plot point out instead we just threw in some Ewoks yeah 
<laughs> yeah, we, we got real kinky with it with the Ewoks. And there, trust me, there's like five hours of footage you didn't see with the Ewoks, but we won't go into that now. <laughs> That's for another extended release. Yeah. When Disney is willing to sell them back, which I know one day they will. Yeah, once they get bored, no, they like they always do. I don't know if they will. I think they're just going to hold back for a while. I don't think it makes too much money in the long run. I think they're just going to hold back on that. Yeah. But, um... But, um... Brain of Superman, whatever. You get this badass ending battle of Superman with his big, long, flowing mullet. You know what I mean? He's carrying a gun. He's wearing the black suit. You know? It's everything you'd want for Superman, really, at the end of the day. Just It just looks so cool. And as he fights I, Cyborg Superman... And I like how it comes full circle for, like, Lois Lane's story in that. Because... It's one of those things where um, the in Death of Superman, she's there, and she kind of saves Superman for a second, but she can't really. Like, Doomsday's about to go stomp him down, and then she throws a rock at him. And then turns around, he's walking to her, and she's just crying, throwing rocks at him, knowing it's not going to do anything. But she's thinking to herself, this might save Clark. And in that moment... Clark gets up, does the final couple bl blows, and they both die. Now this, I thought it was interesting that Superman was in a tight spot, and he was weakened, and he wasn't at 100%. That's why he had the gun in the first place, but her whole thing is like, okay, this is exactly like before, only now I can actually do something. And she opens up the uh, sun blockers so he can get in and get a dose of uh, solar radiation so he can actually beat cyborg superman yeah no, i thought that was a cool way to go about it just charges him up so you can use his laser beams and then just blast him right across the face mm -hmm. and then yeah yeah and then and well the other thing's cool because then he like hits him a couple more times and he stabs him with the crystal with the eradicator superman in there and just like inside the brain for some reason it sends it all the way up to like where uh hank's at and with um i'm not doing apocalypse. apocalypse leaving him totally fucked <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where's he gonna fucking go? <laughs> and just eradicate Superman tip into his brain. I just thought that was badass. Like, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. That was a good final battle. Yeah, so it works for a cool battle. They, well, then Lex Luthor brings back the Justice League. They take care of, you know, all the minions that appeared there and so on and help out Superboy and Steel. And it's just an overall, it's just an awesome, like, Justice League type movie or whatever you want to kind of call it. Superman, Justice League. One of those kind of categories, but um, all around fun. Just one of those just really dialed in ones, you know, maybe not like the greatest of the DCU ones, but still just like nothing to complain about. It's like, I'm going to say this because we, we've talked about this before. There's like the couple like, oh, that one's all right. You know, like Batman Gotham Knights. Yeah. Then there's like what you call mid range. Mid range isn't bad. Then there's the really good ones. And there's like the probably the four or five best yep. ones. I'm going to say this isn't like one of the best. But it's just a little over mid-range, mm -hmm. probably. Which mid-range DC movie, that's still, like, ranging from a three to a four, you know? Yeah. So three, three to four out of four stars. Yeah, I'll have a winner Molten scale. Winter Molten scale, yeah. But, uh, no, I, I definitely think so, too. It's, like, one of those ones. Like, I'm mostly, like, the like the the rate or the rating system always feels like the lowest one I look is like Batman Gotham Knight. That's like probably my least favorite of them all. And still not bad, but just compared to everything else, this was just my little two and a half. Yeah. It's a, it's a perfect two and a half movie. And then from that point on, they just kind of go up, you know, maybe like the Batman, and the Ninja ones, probably like the next one up there or something. Actually, that one's a flat out two for me. Batman Ninja, Batman Ninja is a flat. That, that one's not even viewed as like a main DC movie to me. That's like viewed as like a third party, like, Hey, these guys kind of want the rights, and we can race it over here. We'll see what it's about. Sure, whatever. So throw it out there. Let's see what happens. That's actually probably my least favorite. I forgot Batman Ninja. Yeah, that's like that one's just a two. Yeah, right? I mean, like it, it's it's still enjoyable. It's just got it's just weird when you know we we talked about that in full length. Yeah. But um, but speaking of, I don't feel like I I feel like if I can show them that, like, am I gonna change anyone's mind with this? <laughs> no, like, not, one, not with that one. That one's the movie that like if you want somebody to not be into Batman anymore, you show them that one. I feel like I can change some minds with Under the Red Hood, possibly Killing Death joke. of Superman, Flashpoint, uh, Dark Knight Returns, mm -hmm. even um, like probably Wonder uh, Woman. Wonder Woman, yeah, even Green Lantern, yeah. maybe. Yeah, the, it, maybe Green Lantern. Gr the Green Lantern one, Lantern. it's like one of those ones. It's like as long as you like can at least like somewhat get into Green Lantern, you'll probably really like Green Lantern from the end of that movie because that one's badass. Mm -hmm. But um. So Oh, I was going to say, but um, I like that, like, 
they had like the sneak peek as always of like what the next DCU movie is. But though they mostly always nowadays there's always like an in between movie that gets like no press. They just sort of appear as one day you just kind of stumble into it. So this mm-hmm. there's probably something that's going to be in between this one, but um the next like main one I guess they're doing is they're doing a Justice League one, but like Justice League the 2000s cartoon unlimited. Yeah, yeah. Justice League unlimited one. But it's like, it's a Justice League one. What are they doing? They're going to go see Legion. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, Legion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my thing. I'm still looking forward to it because it's Bruce Timm's Justice League universe. And on top of that, it's like, it's a cool mix match team. It's the, ma- it's the main three, uh, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman. Then you got Mr. Terrific, who's a fantastic yeah. character, who I want to see more of. Which, ter- the Terrifics, that I'm sad they're going to probably cancel that comic series. I've been reading that one recently. I love that series. It's like a weird oddball team of Mr. Terrific, Metamorpho, Plastic Man, and this... I'm not sure if she's a new character or an old character they just dust off the shelf, but a character named Ghost. Huh. So, it's like this weird, kind of oddball, Fantastic Four kind of team up. But anyway, um, well, then they also got um, they got um, uh, Jade. Yeah, they got Jade, and then the Martian Manhunter woman one. What's her name? Miss Martian. Uh, Miss Martian. Miss Martian, and then uh, yeah, they're using the new Green Lantern girl. That like I've never read any of those because it sounds weird that when that Jeff Johns one, like when he had the he had that final like Green Lantern one, and it was in the New Fifty Two, but like it literally was like absolutely nothing to do with New Fifty Two. It was like the, the same continual story he was writing. Since, you know, whenever he started doing Green Lantern. And that book in the third volume had such the... It had, like, the perfect ending to Green Lantern. Like, you didn't need anything more past that point. It was like, this is the best Green Lantern ending you're ever going to have. Boom. Like, it made me kind of feel like, why even bother sort of reading the other ones? Not saying anything against them. I think I might have starred one of them. Because I remember about there was the Green Lantern, like, the Muslim guy who had, like, a gun. And I was like... That's kind of stupid. Why does Green Lantern have a gun? I mean, like, literally, if there's one character that does not need a gun, it's Green Lantern. Why are you giving that guy a mask resembling a ski mask? Yeah, well, it's like he had a ski mask. He had a gun. He looked like he was... Literally, he just looked like he was a Muslim guy robbing, like, a liquor store. Like, I don't know what... <laughs> just Because it, it was the combination of the ski mask, gun, Muslim dude. That's kind of a weird mix right there. That that just felt like... I don't know what they were like. That, that just felt like a bunch of guys sitting around, like, the office pitching ideas back. Like, okay, well, you know, Muslims are popular nowadays. Let's, let's make a Muslim one. That'll make, they'll make them happy. You know, though they probably they complain over there. They always seem to complain whenever whenever somebody in America makes a character for them, they always like bitch about it, just like Aladdin or something like that. But um, whatever. <laughs> it's just one of those ones well, where it's that, like it's, it's well, not that he's not a he's not a bad character. He's just kind of designed weird. I just think I just think the gun and the ski mask kind of look is kind of. That's the only thing that kind of throws me off. Like, why does Green Lantern need a gun? But I'm sure they come up with some stuff. I'm just used to it. Or he's like a... Is he like ex-seal or something like that? Or something I, to that I don't effect? even think he was a military guy. As I said, I remember reading like... One, I remember reading like his intro story. And I just was not hooked. And as I said, like... You know, it's, it was kind of like... I don't know. The thing about the Green Lanterns that kind of... I, I kind of get like a little bit old with is like... Stop making more human characters with them. I think I'm... I'm fine with a bunch of like alien Green Lanterns, but it's just like how many human Green Lanterns do we really need by this point? We got like nine of them now. It's just kind of like ridiculous. I was never really a diehard Green Lantern fan, but I always thought it'd be cool if like if they wanted to just mix it up like on the main Just League. Just take, you know, uh, John Stewart or Hal Jordan out of it for a minute, throw Kilowog on the team. Yeah, like that would be awesome. Uh, they, they just never give enough credit, I think, to some of the alien Green Lanterns. It's always like, oh, it's got to be Kyle Rayner. Well, you didn't see Kyle Rayner. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. You know, and then it's like, you know, it's either, you know, mostly it's Hal Jordan if you want classic. You know, it's, um, he, uh, what's, what's the original Green Lantern's name? Um, Scott something. Yeah. You see him sort of if you want to have, like, you know, Justice Society of America or something like that. They'll throw them if they want the, like, the nostalgic feel, you know, um, and then it's like, now it's like they kind of got, they got that female Green Lantern. I've never read anything with her in there. And it's like, well, you know, I guess that's cool. I mean, they sort of had, um, what's Hal Jordan's drum? Like, what's his girlfriend's name? Oh, Carol. Carol, yeah, because she wasn't a. Carol Danvers. Yeah. Carol Danvers. And she wasn't a Green Lantern per se. She was like the Pink Lanterns and so on. But like, that sort of felt to me like, well, there's your sort of female Green Lantern character. But now it's like they got, like, another one. It's just like, I don't know, there's just too many, like, Green Lands that keeps coming out. You know what I mean? Like, just keep it to, like, John Stewart, you know, Hal Jordan. I mean, Kyle Rayner's kind of like, Kyle Rayner just always feels like, kind of like Hal Jordan-like. He almost feels like, you know, if, if, if it was a Street Fighter game and you changed, like, the color 
for like Hal Jordan, you get Kyle Rayner pretty much. Yeah, um, it, it, what's good? he's not a bad character. I mean, and I get it. It's like oh, he's an artist who got the ring. You know, I mm-hmm. guess that's cool. Well, well, he, I'll say this real quick. And um, then the best one, the best he, Green Lantern though is oh god, I'm just drawing my blank. It's just too late in the night for like my Green Lantern knowledge to kick in. But um, uh, before the, the pretty much the second Green Lantern as after Hal Jordan um, what's his name? Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner. That's the best. That's the best Green Lantern. Bowl cut? Well, not bowl cut one. I, I like that's one of those characters when they change the bowl cut. I think that's where it kind of fixed him. Like Jeff John Sky Gardner. Oh. Dude, that's the character you want to see the most of. I don't know what it is, because he's just, like, fun and jockey, but, like, in a good kind of way. Like, it makes you, like... He's like the comedian, but not nearly as violent. Okay. Well, speaking of Green Lantern, um, well, actually, it is more of a sad what could have been. Um, I didn't listen to the whole thing. Um, I, Kevin Smith does Fat Man on Batman. I don't really listen to it as much as I used to, but I saw something uh, like i saw like a, a youtube video of it pop up and it just said scott snyder justice league or, or Zack snyder justice league and i was like well, what are they talking about this for and i just click it and they had the list down of like oh go to this part of the video at this point to listen to this part of the conversation and just like p- plans scrapped that were for justice league you know i'm like oh shit all right well and, you know, there's probably already articles and people have talked about it by this point, by the time the show comes out, but I'll just pass this on because I'm like, God damn it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so Kevin Smith was talking about how he went to go see, um, he went to England to go see how far along they are in filming the new Star Wars. And while he was there, he said he was talking to some of the crew, and a lot of the crew guys there worked on Man, Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. And he says, like, well, I can tell you this right now, because I was there, and this is actually what happened. And that's all all over now, so I'm not um, contractually, ah, I can't even talk right now, contractually obligated not to speak of it. And he says there's that part where uh, Alfred says, thank goodness you're here. He says, like, in the movie, they make it Superman. And when we were filming it, there's originally green lights shining on him. He says, like, green lights? Yeah, there's going to be a couple of green lanterns there. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. And then what they're going to do is there's two, there's the ending, they said there's almost three versions of that movie. There's the ending we got, and then there's a second one where it's kind of close to what we got with a few other little things, like possibly Green Lanterns in there, but then after they defeat uh, Darkseid, they, he, not Darkseid, they, after they defeat um, Steppenwolf, he goes into the portal and they see Doomsday there, not Doomsday, I'm getting all my D characters. Dark side. They see Dark Side there, and they lock eyes with Dark Side. He's standing on the other side of the portal, like, oh, what the fuck? And like, all right. And then they're like, all right, well, we gotta take the war to him. And then the third movie was gonna be them going to Apocalypse, stopping it. And then there's another version, and this is what Snyder's original version was gonna be, which is where they were gonna go, where Justice League, they're gonna go after uh, Dark Side. That, 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 that was gonna actually end with them losing. It was gonna end with them losing all together. And that led into the vision Bruce Wayne has in Batman v Superman. Yeah, which would make sense. And then from there, it was going to be like kind of like Mad Max Justice League. Them trying to take the world back and stopping it from ever happening. And from there, it would be kind of a more similar... After they stop all this, it would be a more bright, optimistic Justice League. One that we kind of recognize more to the show and the comics. See, and that's the thing is like we've been waiting for a while because they keep talking about like releasing a Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, and it's like one of those ones like granted. Here's the thing: like Justice League as the one it is right now is already pure awesome, but it sounds like the Zack Snyder cut of it, or just even having an alternate cut or extended footage. I don't care. It's like I just love that kind of stuff, anyways. It just sounds very interesting, and it seems like it's all there. It's one of those ones. It's not like oh, we need to do any reshoots or anything like that. It's like no, no, no. it's pretty much just there. It's just like, come on, Warner Brothers. I mean, you've done it for so many other things. I mean, we had an extended cut of Batman v Superman. You know, you had the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2. Like, it's really not out of the question, I feel, for Warner Brothers to put this together. But Well, my my question is, because what happened is Batman v Superman came out and it got its didn't get the best reviews when it did, but you still have the director's cut. And even people were a little like, alright, director's cut's better. But I'm wondering <laughs> even if the director's cut, if it's one of those things where it was 
I still feel like there is shit taken out. Like, I still feel like there is shit they would not let him put in there, or, let, or they pulled back last minute. You know what I mean? Because the whole Martha thing is dumb to me, but that feels like something that they came up with last minute. I don't know. It just feels that way to me. I'd like to think that was last minute, but still. Even with that, it sounds like he was working towards something. It's just kind of frustrating to hear, like... Why do you guys always got to step in and fuck this up, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's even like with Ju- Justice League as well. It's like that movie's under two hours, which is just so odd for something like that. It's like that that just always tells me that, like, there's easily at least a half an hour to an hour or more you could probably put into that movie and see what's missing out on there. And I, I hope maybe as well as ones, maybe when they finally get around to doing the next Justice League movie, maybe they'll, they'll do one of those kind of things that, like, you know, before Justice League comes out, get prepped with the Zack Snyder cut. Maybe they'll do that, but um, I don't know. They're still kind of up in the air. They're still going to make DC movies, but they don't really know. They said they're not going to re- rely too much on continuity. They're just going to go up the Aquaman trilogy now, probably. They're like, shit, that Aquaman one did really good. <laughs> Fuck everybody else. We used to think Batman was our cash cow. Not anymore. What was one of those weird ones where, like, Aquaman... You know what? You know how Iron Man pretty much... Iron Man? He literally, like, you know, for the for our entire life, it was always Spider-Man. It's like, Marvel, Spider-Man. Who was in the front? Spider-Man. Stan Lee, Spider-Man. And then all of a sudden, like, Aquaman came, and it's like he just, like, stepped in front of Spider-Man, pushed him back, like, a couple rows, <laughs> you know? And then I was like, yep. This swing somewhere, boy. Been waiting for this day my whole life. <laughs> and I'm, what, yeah. what if it's one of those ones where, like, all of a sudden, like, instead of seeing, like, Batman on everything like that, it's like, oh, shit, they're trying to really sell this. They're putting Aquaman on the cover. <laughs> the, the the poster for Aquaman 2, it just looks like the back symbol, but it's like a trident. Yeah, just, yeah, just, it's just, <laughs> Batman's kind of, like, in the back. Like, you can sort of see his horns poking up. <laughs> He's like peeking around the corner, <laughs> like, just slightly. like it's just well as well because it's weirdly enough that happened to Spider Man. That happened to Spider Man. There was like I think people kind of forget about that by now because Spider Man's kind of come back into the limelight again. But there was that period where Spider Man was kind of shoved in the back. <laughs> yeah. So if he, if he's just funny, period. Aquaman kind of was like like Warner Brothers just doubled down on the Aquaman success and said, you know what, fuck it, this is what we're doing. Yeah, they might. They just might. You know, it depends on probably how. Well, I mean, like Aquaman's a success. You know, people are shitting on it, but the movie is getting better reception than some of their earlier movies. And on top it's of that, made, it made what a billion money, dollars. Yeah. It's made a fuck ton of money. So and it's like you know, it's just one of those ones. To, like I don't know. To me, I just thought I was like amazed by it. It was like it's literally like DCU animation, good, but just in live action. So amazing. So that thing, just how much money it's raking in, they're definitely gonna, they're definitely making Aquaman two. No way around that. Yeah. Especially, you know, you just gotta. I mean, I, I honestly think that they, they could have just put like Jason Momoa standing in a pool, and it just says, "Gonna get wet." <laughs> I honestly, you probably would have had that theater just crowded with fucking women. Yeah, exactly. Just one of those ones. <laughs> There's so many girls who are just like that move. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. The, so many girls I know are like. I don't even like superheroes, but I'm going to say movie just because Jason Momoa was in it. It's funny because there's like for a while there, I remember like people just didn't like Jason Momoa for some reason. They're like, well, he's like a, he's like a shitty version of The Rock or something. I'm like, and I've always loved Jason Momoa. I like Jason Momoa since like when he did the Conan like three movie. I'm like, I always like Jason Momoa. I don't care what people say. And that's like when he got to become Aquaman, I'm like, hell yeah. Finally, the, finally he's getting his roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um. No, I'd be, uh, yeah, I'm up for uh, a... I'd be up for them to see what they do. Just pick with the more oddball characters. I don't want them to totally retire Batman and Superman. <laughs> well, what was this like? They just, do the, they just do the Aquaman, like, Wonder Woman movie? <laughs> just, that's it. A.W. <laughs> A.W. You know what? What? We're going to have a sponsorship going, too. You get free root beer floats when you go to see the Aquaman Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope that, you know, I like to see him make, take more chances on more, like, oddball characters, like, you know, Shazam and all that, so hopefully Shazam's good. I mean, Shazam's definitely going to be a lot more of a comedy, but I think that works for that character. Yeah. Just hopefully they don't make every movie like that, and Wonder Woman's taking place in 1984, so that's interesting. Yeah, so that'll be a kind of a, a, an interesting one to see there, because granted, I guess with Wonder Woman and Aquaman, it's kind of almost like if DC has sort of, like... Well, you can't even really say DC has a flop of movie. People say that kind of stuff, but they always make money. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, they always walk home. Like, everybody gets paid from a DC movie, you know? Nobody... Well, the th- they're, they're, they're not the like those kind of underperforming movies where it's like, shit, that movie cost, you know, $150 million and only made $50 million. 
Well, the thing about Justice League was, um, the thing, I don't remember how much it made, but I remember the thing about it was, realistically, if they didn't switch directors a bunch of times and go through all these different reshoots and recuts and they just probably stuck through it, that movie probably would have walked away being pretty profitable. It was one of those things where I want to say it made a good amount of money for what would have been a standard, you know, movie like released in November. I want to say it made a good amount of money, but just it was just too much stacked on it because they kept on reshooting and recutting and doing all this shit and changing directors. And I want to say Solo was the same thing. Like, Solo wasn't that the movie didn't make money. It's just they spent way too much money reshooting all this shit. So, out of that, there's this, okay, well, now we technically got two movies with this one movie has to make up for. Yeah, I think it's that. And then I think it's, like, the one they, like, they expect to make this, like, like Avengers money. And it's, like, when the Avengers money doesn't come in and it's less than that, then it's almost like they feel like they failed, though they still made a profit. That kind of weird mentality. Yeah, well, it's not one of those things, like, it only made, like, like... Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, we have no stake in the game, really. So, but at the exact same time, it's just I, I think people just—it's hard to do that. I mean, I, I mean, it, the last time I remember being like, what was it? The last time I remember just really being surprised by box office was like by box box office, like you know how much a movie makes was like probably Avengers one. That was the last time I was really surprised. And then I, mean, I knew it was gonna make some money, but I was like, oh Jesus! But it's kind of hard to do that, like. Again, because everyone, standard public doesn't know the difference between, I mean, they know the difference between the characters, but don't know if like, all right, is Batman Marvel? You know, a lot of people don't fucking know. So they're just like, wasn't that, wasn't, so they go see Justice League and they're like, oh, wait, which, is not this already happen? Wait, isn't, who's in the Justice League? Um, I think it's Batman, Captain America, Iron Man, and and the Crow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The Crow. I think this, I think, I think Savage Dragon, maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Is this a sequel to Dread? <laughs> yeah, like I don't know, not even that, but like you know that those are I threw we had through some weird IDW and like dark like image characters, but I mean a lot of people AD. I don't think really even. That's a 2000 AD of Judge Dread. Is is Savage Dragon IDW or, or Image? Ooh, that's a good question. There, I can't tell you. Cop Dragon. They both have an eye. Yeah, well, yeah. Um. Anyway. I mean, I think people just, a lot of people, like, you know, like, say our parents, they might watch one of these movies, but they're not going to remember, like, wait, which one is Iron Man? You know, not, not like, which one, is he Marvel or is he DC? It doesn't fucking matter. I don't care. Don't answer that. Well, yeah, it's like, I kind of realize even with the Marvel movies, I kind of forget that, like, if you miss a couple, like, I remember, like, there's one of the ones I showed my parents once. I'm like, oh, man, like, you got to check this one. This one's awesome. And it was like oh, crap, I don't think you saw these ones beforehand. And it's like, it really almost didn't make any sense to them because, like, they missed a couple of these, like, in-between movies. And it was like, oh, I kind of forgot that, like, you can't just totally jump into these ones anywhere. You really have to kind of watch them from the beginning for the most part. Was it Endgame or something else? Uh, no, it was... Might have been Avengers 2, actually. I think it might have been Avengers 2 when that one came out. And it was one of those ones because I was like, dude, this movie's so awesome. And that, because I know, I'm thinking like the one I must have owned on Blu ray to bring on over mm-hmm. and watch. And um, yeah, I want to say it was that one. It's like, oh no, you know, no, actually, it was, it was Captain America Civil War. I think that's the one it was. That makes and sense. And it was one of those yeah, movies where it's like, the first one. That's the first one, like, you haven't keeping up, fuck you. Yeah, because that movie I was going to say, I was like, well, you know, I started thinking back. I'm like, well, my, you know, I know my dad's probably watched like Ant Man and, you know, like, he, like a miscellaneous ones here and there. But, you know, you, you didn't think about it. But it's like, oh, yeah, if you just didn't see... Like, I think he might not... I think they might not have seen Avengers 2. So I think that probably made it really confusing as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's also the first time where it's, like, titled after one specific character, but then has characters from all over the fringe, all over the whole universe in this one movie, where before, like, oh, there's a cameo, where well, that's the first time where it's like, oh, look, one of the main characters is Iron Man in a Captain America movie. Oh, Hawkeye's there. Uh, Vision's there. Spider-Man's there. This guy's... Spider-Man's there. Like, wait, what? Yeah, Spider-Man's <laughs> there. Don't think about it too hard. Just mookie moot, you know? So, it's one of those things where I just... For a standard... People who don't keep up with comics or... keep. I mean, even people who don't read comics kind of can follow this. People who, like, really follow movies a lot because they kind of know about this. It's kind of something similar to that aspect, you know? Yeah, and it's almost like I feel like if you almost... I mean, like, Grant, I think you could make enough heads and tails to go with it, but I just don't think you'll have that same experience if you miss some of those ones. Like, almost even if you showed, like, Justice League to someone and they didn't see Batman v Superman or even Man of Steel, they might be kind of... 
a little bit lost. You know, I, I think they could still kind of, you know, enjoy it, but you know what I mean? You sort of almost like you kind of forget that you sort of just need to see these other ones in between. You kind of totally blanked out there, but I kind of caught the very end of that. So, yeah, it just kind of helps if you see these movies. I mean, there's more gravity that builds up on especially all these connected movies. But overall, you can kind of show, you know, I think I mean, you'd make, you could probably still figure it out for the most yeah. part. Yeah. I mean, once again, I give Aquaman kind of credit because that's a perfect example of a movie. You don't need to see any of the other ones and just you can go straight into Aquaman and you're covered. Yeah. So. Well, my computer's starting to, like, flicker on and off through Wi-Fi. So we should probably wrap this thing up right now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well... If anything, we got that new DCU one to look forward to, even if it's kind of got Cosmo Boy in it and whatnot, or Cosmic Kid, whichever. What a fire lad or whatever the fuck. Yeah, got, got, got one of them. I mean, for the most part, I feel like it's just like a hint of like the Legion. It's not really like full Legion, I guess. If it was like maybe a full Legion movie, would be like, oh, okay. I mean, I'll buy, uh, granted, I'll buy anything that's DC and it's a movie. You know, I, I don't judge and I always, and I probably would enjoy it, you know. Yeah, I mean, even that mm-hmm. Ray one that was like kind of like that was a character. It's like, oh, that's an interesting character. I mean, wasn't one of the greatest. That that's kind of a low bar, I guess, DCU movie, but um, still wasn't bad. I mean, it had Nazi Supergirl, and I guess that's kind of a take home message. <laughs> what, what, what's the take home message? Well, the Nazi Some Supergirl, hair, blue eyed thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nazi Supergirl was kind of cool villain, but um, but yeah, it's like one of those ones. Still, the Bruce Timness to it taking place in the Justice League like unlimited universe. That's awesome. Got Kevin Conroy and everything back in there. Well, that one's going to still be pretty badass, I bet you, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. But um, other than that good stuff, we'll put a little link in the show description if you want to help support the podcast. We'll put a link there for um, Reign of the Superman if you want to grab yourself a copy over at Amazon. won't cost you any extra, but it'll send a little something-something our way. Um, check out oldmanorange.com for more comics, podcasts, movies, music, movies, all that fun stuff. Till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We'll see you some other time. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again, and we're out of here.